All right. Well, good evening, all. Welcome to the oh, nice. Tuesday, April 21st, 2020, uh, regular, if you want to call it that, meeting of the Town of Easton Planning and Zoning Board. Um, since so many of you weren't here last time, um, I will read through um, our remote meeting procedures one more time and for any folks uh, that are participating remotely. In keeping with the ongoing emergency order from Governor Charlie Baker to limit gatherings and maximize social distancing and un under legislation passed to remove to remote <clears throat> excuse me let me try that again and under legislation legislation passed to address remote board meetings during the emergency declaration this meeting will be conducted remotely over zoom attendance by board and commission members will be remote and remote audience shall count towards quorum the meeting will be broadcast live and recorded on ecat to use zoom you will need to download the Zoom application at zoom.us, create an account, and follow the instructions. While conducting the meeting remotely, we will endeavor to keep meeting operations as close to our standard procedures as possible. However, use of this platform will, ne will necessitate some additional meeting protocols. <clears throat> One, while the board members or commissions Commissioners and applicants will be on video and audio. Public participants will join the meeting muted and with no audio, with no video feed from them. Public will be kept muted until such time as they are recognized to speak to eliminate background and keep meeting order. During the public testimony portion of the meeting, please use the raise hand function to be recognized, found under participants from Zoom, or make a request via the Q&A function. If you join only by phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand. If, if an applicant wishes to be seen during testimony or display materials, please make the request of the chair and the meeting host will enable your video. When starting testimony, please state your name and address for the record. There is a markup function in Zoom, which will allow you to call out specific areas of presentation materials. As in any public meeting, indecent behavior will not be tolerated and anyone who abuses <clears throat> use of this meeting platform will be terminated from the meeting. Business will be handled at all times indicated on the agenda. Business not conducted in the allotted time will be tabled to the end of the meeting to allow for timely logins and remote audience. All votes will be taken by roll call. When all business indicated on the agenda has been completed, the members will vote to adjourn the meeting, signaling the end of the meeting and the termination of the ECAT recording. All participants will be disconnected from the meeting at that time. So uh, before we get going, <clears throat> one thing we will do oh, is uh, just to ensure we have a quorum, we'll take a voice roll call. Strange here. That's in here. The same here. Get him here. Chris, did you chime in? No. Nice to be muted. Anderson here. There we go. All right, that's everybody, I think, right? Okay, so we have a quorum. Um, so first on our agenda, oh, the agenda's up on the screen. Um, we have request, uh, we have received a request to continue, um, Sawmill Village till May 11th. And just one point of order here, um, Imai, that this is, I don't think this matters. This is listed as a continued, continued public hearing. Um, but we technically never opened a public hearing. It's just a, uh. Oh, okay. Site plan review, which is just for the next agenda. Just, gotcha. after, just so anybody at home knows. So I don't. We don't need to take a, a motion on that. I don't. Or do we? Yeah. You know, we have before. Gotcha. So why don't we do it just to play uh, to be uniform, or consistent? I should say. Okay. If anybody would like to make a motion to continue sure, to May 11th. Motion to continue to May 11th. Second. All those in favor, strange aye. Stetson aye. Shane aye. Anderson aye. 
Yeah, them doesn't need because you already have quorum, but I. That's unanimous. Okay, uh, same thing, 58 Mill Street. Owl Ridge Estates, uh, both the definitive subdivision plan and the special permit, we have received a request to continue the public hearing until May 11, 2020. Motion to continue 58 Mill Street and 5 Owl Ridge Road to May 11. Second. Second. Um, strange, all those in favor, strange aye. The Shane aye. Stats and I. Anderson and I. Hey, they might. That's unanimous. Okay, and one more, the same thing for 418 Depot Street, special permit for a state lot and special permit for common driveway. Request to continue to May 11th, 2020. Motion to continue 418 Depot Street, special permit and the state lot to May 11th. Second. All those in favor, strange aye. Stutz and I. Anderson and I. Okay. I think we got everybody there. Um, all right, next up is, oh, what's that? It's, um, uh, continue board business, 42 Randall Street, a r number 20-181. And Eli, right. I, I am going to, to let this. in right now our, um, allowed to talk and actually bring him in as a panelist. Um, Eric Dias, the project engineer on this. So Eric, you should be able to talk right now and, and walk us through your project if you need to. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, fantastic, good. It's my, uh, my first public hearing on the Zoom platform, so forgive me if I'm a novice here. I'm sure we're all kind of new at this. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so I, I understand that you talked about this A&R plan at your last meeting. Um, what we're proposing essentially is just four simple A&R lots, uh, excuse me, five A&R lots, uh, two of which will have frontage on Alderwood, three of which will have frontage on Randall Street. Um, my understanding is that there was some conversation at the last meeting, a comment was made that because there's wetlands on the site, the board wasn't comfortable to endorse the plan without having some form of a formal wetland delineation certification, um, presumably in ANRAD. Um, I've been back and forth with some of the board staff uh, since that time, and there was a letter that came, a uh, board uh, staff memo that came out today that suggested that we either file the ANRAD or we add notation to each lot that says that each lot is non buildable. Now, an a &R plan is not intended to certify whether or not a lot is buildable. Nobody can certify whether or not a lot is buildable except for the zoning enforcement officer who in Easton is the building inspector. There is already notation on the plan at the planning board signature block that states that endorsement of the plan is not a certification of compliance with zoning. So what would presumably happen is at the time that a building permit was to be applied for, if the zoning enforcement officer had a question, he would refer us to the conservation commission. And if need be, the a &R plan would be amended at that point. Now, one other thing that we did present to the board uh, through the staff of the planning board is some um, case law that's given in the a &R handbook. And if I can find that, I'd like to read a quick excerpt from I, it. I don't think you need to. You already sent that. We saw, we saw that. So okay. I think that's fine. And, and if I could just jump in, uh, I understand what you're saying, and I agree, But I, and I believe you've worked in Easton before. This is the first time in a while we've received an A&R before us uh, where the, that, has, that was obviously pending uh, um, development, and uh, the wetlands hadn't been... Um, hadn't been uh, confirmed with the ANRAD and CONCOM. So we simply said either pull at the meeting was okay, we'll just pull the, pull the wetlands off since they haven't been confirmed or if we keep it on, we'll say it's not a buildable lot. That's practice that we've done for the 14 years that, that, uh, that I've been on this board or 15 years. Um, it hasn't happened too often because most times the, the line is simply, um, the line is just, it's, you know, it's, it's simply been confirmed by the time it gets to us for the ANR. Sure, sure. I guess me. I don't understand why we're we're pulling out legal briefs and making such a big, you know, 
this is you're saying you, yeah you put a signature block that says that i'm just saying to keep it with the practice that we've done before uh per what what uh staff has told you a week or two ago <clears throat> so if i may um i think you mentioned to, i one of the options was to just take the wetland off the plan is that correct yeah if it hasn't it hasn't been it hasn't it's an a and r like you say and and it hasn't been hasn't been confirmed so forgive me that that comment was not conveyed to my office i will gladly take the wetland off this plan and resubmit the plan okay yeah this is well sorry to waste your time this is what we said two weeks ago um i apologize that car that particular comment didn't make its way to me so i can have this wetland taken off the plan and i can resubmit this this week then all right sounds good perfect problem solved <laughs> great so i hope you don't mind me cutting you off but i just figured we'd get to that point so just try that I have a tendency to ramble, so I appreciate it. No, no, it. You, know, you weren't rambling, but I just didn't, you know. So, all right, great. Um, any, any, uh, Emi or anybody on the board, do you guys have any questions or? I'm good. Issues? All set. All right, I will take right, it off. Yes, thank you. Thank you all for your time. All right. Uh, let's see. So two, oh, sorry, okay. So 290 Turnpike Street, that's our next one. 290 this, Turnpike Street, yes. This is, um, are we expect is uh, any uh, We expected uh, Nick to be back. Let me check if he's there. Yeah, I see him. He's under panelist. Yep. Okay. So um, just be before we open up, so, uh, so Peter, this one uh, where you weren't at the last meeting. So if you remember, this is the, um, What's the address on this one? This is 290 Trumpet Street. So this is the commercial uh, contractor bay building we approved. And now it has batting cages going in. And if you remember, um, there was a concern when we, this came before us for a uh, request for comment when it was going for a variance through ZBA. And you, you brought up, you were concerned that there would be adequate lighting. Um, and... <clears throat> So the, the ZBA uh, approved the variance with the caveat that um, that planning board signs off on the lighting, uh, which and just keep the budget going. We, I, I agreed with EMI, so let's just, you know, we'll do it prior to occupancy. We didn't want to hold things up since our meetings were, had been delayed because of the virus. Um, so anyways, I know I spoke with Peter, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Marioni was here last week, told us, or two, two weeks ago, told us um, the, the building was lit up at night. Um, the site was lit up at night. And I know, uh, so I mentioned to Peter and the other board members if they wanted to go by. So anyways, that's for the public. That's a little history. And um, Nick, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Anything you want to add or say here? Um, the only thing I want to say is that uh, we, we put the lighting in exactly the way it was uh, approved on the on the site plan and by the electrical engineer Vinnie Diorio and we in addition added two more lights in the back because the, the owner felt that uh, there were a couple of dark spots back there so we added two additional building lights in the back but the rest of the site is exactly as shown on the uh, approved plan and I just didn't know what the comment was and we're trying to get out in front of it okay uh, Peter? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, I drove by and I think it, I think that seems adequate. I mean, I was just concerned that uh, some of my kids have been to other establishments that were sort of converted to um, sports facilities later on and they've been pretty dark and, um, you know, kind of unsafe with drop offs, but it, it looked, looked right. It looks like a nice building. Okay, so everything's all set we can get a letter sent to the building department and the uh or whatever however you handle this that is so we don't get held up at co on this yeah. you sure yeah just before any any other board members do you have any comments or just what no okay yeah i mean I, that was this was sort of i, I, do, have, I do have a comment uh, okay. the abutters are the people around is this lighting uh, such that will not they affect the neighbors around here? Uh, this lighting, this was already approved through the site plan approval process, at which time we looked at the photometrics, uh, okay. photometric plan. So it's, that's, that's, that's not really, um, uh, I mean, it, that's, so it's not an issue in this one. It was, it's, it's, and it is dark sky friendly, so it's, right. it's all okay. dark sky friendly. 
Um, so, Imai, do you have any problem sending a, a, a letter to? Uh, Not at all. Can to, do. To, uh, building uh, the building uh, commissioner. Okay. Will do. Um, so, um, so why don't we? Since this kind of, I, I think we should do this in a motion, just since it. Uh, the con um, since the ZBA um, um, gave us the responsibility of approving it. So, Peter, would you like to make a motion? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the plan um, with the lighting as shown. Second. And I, would, I would just add as as uh, as built. I guess we should say because I know there was two additional lights. Yeah. Sure. Do, you need, um, do you need to say? Do you need to say anything about us sending that letter? Uh, no, we'll email. will take care of that. So we we have a second. Um, okay. So uh, roll call. All those in favor? Strange. Aye. Stats and I. Anderson. Aye. Okay, then I. All right. Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Marioni. Thank you. Have a good night. Stay good safe. luck. You too. Thank you. All right. Um, next up is 233 Rare Lincoln Street in a and &R. New business. Emai, the floor is yours. All right. Oh. Let me bring this one up here. So this lot, now you guys will know the history much better than I will, but obviously um, just from what it looks like simply, it's adjusting this line and kind of tilting it over uh, clockwise a bit. It's, it, this is the Lincoln Estates. It was approved with the definitive subdivision. I understand there were uh, wetlands issues to it, however, this change doesn't really do anything to any of those, to the wetlands, to the previous approvals, to uh, those conditions will, that was part of the original subdivision will still carry on. And really it's just kind of balancing these lot lines, I guess. Yep. Um, I see Frank's on Frank Rablin. Is he gonna? Oh yeah, let me bring him up here. here. All right, Frank, I've brought you in as a panelist. Let me. Okay, I am here. If you can hear me. Yep. Yep. All right. So, anything more to tell us about the? About the a &R adjustment here? Not really. The developer uh, wished to equalize the areas a little bit better. He felt it'd be a lot to be um, a little more sellable if he could increase the area on the lot on the left. Uh, as we've stated, this change does not affect the frontage at all as the front lot point stays the same. And the total upland area for both lots remains greater than 40,000 square feet. Yeah, and, and Ema, I can't access my screens on this, but I know you, I believe your report said uh, there's, there's no reason not to approve this, correct? Yep, yeah, that is what uh, that is. Yeah, basically what I said here. Here's the oh, report, which is yeah, pretty pretty short. It's it's a lot of adjust, line adjustment. Doesn't really yeah right. change much. So I just wanted to uh, you were taking the time to do the report, so I felt yeah since it's, since it's there, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, board members, any questions? No, mo motion to endorse the ANR filing. Second. All those in favor, strange aye. That's an aye. Good an aye. aye. Anderson aye. All right, and just to be clear, I will sign this for the board, right? Yes. Okay. I do, I do have one question, and that is, uh, what is the procedure for getting the original Mylar delivered? Uh, Frank, why don't we talk about that? Um, give me a call or an email, and we'll talk about that offline. I mean, it probably have to be just some kind of handoff or something like that. Perfect. Perfect. Will do. Okay. Thank you. 
All right, thank you. Uh, on a related email, um, uh, Bill, Bill Humphreys, right about the time you started, remember there was a, a plan that we had to sign? Yes. I, the, yep. I have, he, he dropped, this is right before everything blew up, he dropped off the original Mylar to me. So if you're ever looking for that, it's still in my foyer. Okay. It's in, it's in quarantine. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, you got to give it uh, a day, right, for it to... Yeah, let's have about thirty. To so it should be good by now, right? Well, my large plastic, right? Forty-eight hours on plastic. Is that? Oh no, it's porous plastic. Yes, is it, it is plastic. Uh, is it, it's called polymer, by the way. Plastic doesn't exist. Okay, you can always tell the engineer. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So, didn't we have? Thought we had another A and R. Uh, nope, just the two. Just Randall Street and uh, Lincoln. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we've done Lincoln. So um, we have uh, the revised draft zoning amendment for uh, the Furnace Village District. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which, um, and I must confess, um, so this is, I've been working on a huge set of plans. I haven't, but this is the same. This is what you gave us last time, correct? This is what we gave us last time. And where we left off was um, we had just started to introduce the major topic of discussion, which was, I believe, mixed use being a special permit or um, a buy right with site plan approval and the movement of the design standards uh, from the bylaw itself to, to regulations. Um, you know, since then we, since we were short a few members, we never really dove um, hard into that discussion. We did talk about it a little bit. I remember, um, Rob, you had a few, you had uh, some of the issues with have versus special permit versus uh, versus site plan approval. Um, and, you know, whether that was attached to moving the regulations, the design standards into regulations or keeping them in the bylaw. Um, so I think that's, but we never started any type of uh, debate on that. Um, right, I right. believe it was the first question to look into on this. After that, there were a few just uh, uses I wanted to confirm with the board, but I think hashing out the, the special permit issue was the first thing on to take care of. Okay, so just for the, for the board members that weren't here, uh, I don't know if you've had a chance, <coughs> excuse me, to, to look at this. Um, what we did since, remember when last, uh, when we were still meeting in person, we had um, revised the document a number of times uh, with, with Judy and with Andrea. Um, and then when Emai came on board, <clears throat> I kind of brought him up to speed where we were at. Um, and I had circled back, if you remember, as, as Bob and I were sort of on opposite ends of the, of the special permit. Um, debate and trying not to be a, uh, a forceful chair. I thought, okay, well, let's, we, I, I kind of pulled it away, but then one of the first meetings I had with Emai uh, and with Jay Tallerman, our town council, who we've done a lot of zoning with, um, kind of re rekindled um, the, the, my, you know, really what, what the, the fact that I, I thought going to a, special permit process just for site plan would be for everything else, just site plan process, but special permit for uh, mixed use in the multifamily. We've always had it for multifamily. We're doing other mixed use here. Um, was really to make sure we get, for me, it was always to make sure we get the product uh, aesthetically and, and land use wise and land design. Uh, we, we get the product that we want. Um, I don't, you know, remember, and, and we don't need to rehash the debate and, and I think Bob, I won't state his point, but Bob's thought was well, he, you know, he didn't want to turn away prospective uh, developers. And but you know, looking back, we've been we've been really successful with, with special permits. And, and this board, uh, we um, we've never um, I can't think of a, a special permit that the only special permit we ever denied because the, it didn't meet the, the, the project uh, didn't meet the bylaw. But they were still able to do a conventional um, development of it. <clears throat> And um, I just think it gives us the ability to really help 
um, craft the project um, in, into what we want. You know, these are mostly small par parcels here. Because um, if, we're, if we're dealing with a large developer, for the most part, they're going to come in and do, they're going to sit with us anyways and do a lot of pre-meetings that always happens. It's sort of the smaller developers, which we have quite a bit of, or, or mom and pop, you know, who come in and, um, and, and sometimes look for the, you know, whether intentional or not, <clears throat> they're just looking for the, the path of least resistance and not looking necessarily to, to create the, um, the environment that the bylaws were intended for. Um, and so that, anyway, so that, that's, and, and, and Emi and, and Jay put it much more um, eloquently and succinctly, but I, and I don't want to speak for Emi, he's right here, but uh, they kind of felt that was the, the way to go too, or I don't know, Emi, if you want to chime in, I don't, I don't want to speak for you. But. Um, yeah, after, after talking with, with Jay, our attorney, I mean, <laughs> One thing, yes, I think the flexibility that the special permit gives you to determine what the building or what any project for that matter is going to look like and negotiate it. I think that was really the, the kind of overall strongest message there for me was that we, we would be able to treat it each one on a much more kind of case by case appropriateness basis. Greg, can I uh, can I offer my view of this? Sure. Uh, so I, I knew all this. When Judy uh, has, she had an argument for not doing that, and was uh, because she considered that this being more friendly to for developers because they know where they stand, and they don't go and invest a lot in front to end up with something that end up being a compromise versus having more control about what the outcome will be that is our interest. And I understand your position on this. But uh, on the other hand, uh, we, need, we need to kind of look at facilitating uh, a, a document that will provide maybe incentive for this to really happen because how good this will be if no one will go and, and, and actually go and develop anything because, you know, they are risking money and uh, efforts. So uh, I'm just putting this forward. I don't know one way or the other, but it, it was, in my opinion, some valid argument, isn't it? Well, you know, I think, um, yeah, and you're right, you know, Judy, Judy wanted, you know, felt um, to do it through site plan, but but I, I, a couple of things. I think our process that we went through shows, I think it demonstrated that still there's no substitute for for homegrown. The folks that live in this town that that have served or even that new on this board, um, you know, we can hire all the consultants we want, but we're the ones we're still going to know East and much more, um, and. As chair for about 10 years, I've probably done, I don't even know, hundreds of meetings. I mean, the, the process in Easton, um, how it works, you know, if it's a special premise, something that's gonna really involve the planning board, the planning director and myself as the chair or, or another planning board rep, um, get together, uh, you know, do, do some pre-meetings. And, and we've been, and another, what I, what another, one of the things we've been missing in Easton, um, and I've been, I told this when Connor, prior to we hired it, the new director, um, I, and, and Connor, Connor Reed, the town administrator, and I told Emi when he got the job, I said, you know, one of the, I think one of the most important things our next planning director can work on us with is we have a lot of good zoning that we've done over the last five or ten years. Um, and, and sometimes I think when, you know, and because we've had new planners, we've had six or seven of them in 12 years. So it's, and I get people come in and goals and objectives, but I think we, we need to sort of get back and um, work. We, we need to cultivate the, 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 the work that we've done. And part of that is creating, you know, a, a much better 
uh, rules and administrative rules and regulations. And because that's where, in, and I think putting our design standards in that <clears throat> is a much better way because that allows us as a board in, in hand in hand with, with, um, with EMI and, and even other, other members of other boards that uh, allows us to really craft um, guidelines that we'd like in a much friendlier, uh, easier, you know, we don't have to go through, we don't have to go to um, town meeting. We can, you know, we can do it. We can do working sessions as a group. That's, that's one thing we've talked about doing <clears throat> for a few years and we just haven't gotten to it because we keep, keep having new personnel every two or three years. Um, and, and I, you know, I think we'd all rather, you know, I'd love to see a bylaw be two or three pages, a bylaw amendment versus, you know, 30 pages. Um, and, and so, and I'm not being very succinct, forgive me, but uh, so I'm a, so to your point, you know, in this district, I think if this district had lots of large parcels, you know, maybe that we're going to attract, you know, some big time players, yeah, you know, maybe that argument would, would, would be more germane, but I think we have, these are small, mostly small parcels. This is a small district. It's going to be a, and I've already met with probably a half dozen, at least even more, probably 10 of the property owners in the proposed district um, because they're, they're very interested in doing stuff. Um, and they're very interested in, they, they come to us and say, Hey, what can we do? Tell us what we can do. And th that's a nice, I like that. That's a, that lets this board and, and this department, um, truly tie in all the things that we've talked about with the master plan and, you know, uh, and, and some of the, the visioning sessions, you always hear this stuff, but you know, th these things add up over time. And, and when we can really get that input into the process, it's nice and it's rewarding and successful. It can be successful. And I, I don't see how that happens through site plan review. Cause I, I think we just get folks that <clears throat> are going to look for the, the easiest way and, you know, and, and I haven't seen, you know, we've done a lot, of, everything we've done has been special permit the last five, six years. And we haven't had any issues. It's been very successful and the developers like it. So anyways, I'm, I'm babbling on, forgive me. No, I, I, I just wanted to say that I am not for that and just bring the argument to, to listen to the reasons. Uh, no, I, no, I understand. Yep, I get you. Well, I, I have to admit also, if I, <clears throat> if I can, the, the way I see it, I, I think I prefer for the bylaws to be the constitution and the design to be the leg legislation because that's a way in which you can keep uh, a high level uh, bylaws in place, but you can play a little with the, uh, with the design uh, uh, regulations. And, and, and I think it's good because I think this will, will evolve because we don't know what this is going to be. And having that uh, regulation probably will allow us in the future to adjust with a lot less complication. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. In fact, you know, if you look at Judy's version, you know, she taught, you know, she was stressing, um, she was thinking very kind of generic mixed use, I think. And she, you know, was stressing the 14 to 16 foot ceiling height for restaurants and, and et cetera. And, and if that's part of the bylaw, and, you know, then it's like we're going through and I, I can just see it. People are going to be like, well, you know, your bylaw says we have to have a 14 foot ceiling or 16 foot ceiling. Well, we want a 12 and, and then we have to we have to do waivers or very, you're going to have to go for a variance if we want to do a waiver. And so if we are yeah, doing that through design guidelines gives us a lot more flexibility and I, and I think brings us to a, you know, it makes the process. And, and to Bob's point, you know, this is all about what we're always stressing. We want developers do want predictability of course you know and they want a smooth process um and the smoother we make the process the more we're going to get for easton be that you know whatever it is whether it's mitigation or open space or you know whatever you know on any specific project so i think the the, the motivation has been there and has been and has been um noticed and adhered to by our board to to make this work um on, on special permits so we've been you know, I, I'm just, I've just been very happy with the special permits work that we've done in town. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I think it served what the town wanted and, and it's served what the developers have wanted. Of course, now this, <laughs> this, uh, this virus has kind of put the skids on a few, few things, but maybe we'll be throwing the whole book out and rewriting it anyways. But. It, it, it does require a little more work by us, but on the other hand, I can see <clears throat> clearly what you say, I kind of I absolutely agree.
that the process will be smoother, provided that we do good work, preparation, and engagement with the, with the developers. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, the, the responsibility falls to us. I remember at one of the meetings, Bob, you said, um, you said, Greg, you won't be here forever. And, you know, that's true. None of us will be. Um, but, you know, hopefully, I think we've really started to change the culture, um, I think, of development in the last 10 years. And he said, look, look at the effect we've had on, on duplexes, for example, and, and the, the aesthetic of it. And, um, you know, I, I think that that will survive, you know, just one person. And, you um, you know, ch change isn't always the fastest thing, but we've we've been working really hard on this for ten years, and um, I think it can continue. So, but and, and we don't obviously we don't need to decide this tonight. We don't even know we have no idea when we'll be presenting this. So, um, but and, and just to circle back, so this version that Emai's done, pretty it, is where we he didn't change any of the. Uh, you know, dimensional so he just kind of reorganized it um yes. and i'm and much remember, remember we we were i think the five or six meetings in bob and i still couldn't figure out parts of that bylaw the way it was written originally so this is this is a much nicer uh but user -friendly it, version but it has both the option in it right yeah it's, it's in two halves just so because we you know we wanted to you know and we don't we know we don't have to decide that tonight but we could say it's a much shorter version without it um mm -hmm. And, um, but it's just, you know, we, I just thought why we have this, we won't bring this up. We don't need to bring this up on every meeting, but it's just, you know, it's out there. And um, I'll, I'm at your, uh, I'm at the, uh, I'm at your, I mean, we're at your service. We, board members, we can go as quick or as slow with this as you want. So, just I, mean, I, I, I think we ought to, oh, I'm sorry, my. I just wanted to mention, in terms of when one does have to decide, Selectmen voted tonight to move town meeting to June 22nd. Um, they did kind of put the caveat in there that it will probably back up again, but right now that's what's known. So if we were to back up from that date, we'd probably want to advertise for a public hearing, um, you know, first meeting of June, public hearing, another meeting maybe to to get a recommendation straightened out to the moderator. So with that timeline, we'd want to start advertising um, around just after May 11th meeting, we'd want to have something solid we could we could put out for uh, for the hearing consideration. But again, you know, that's that's what we know right now. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point because we're going to have to. Yeah, I mean, so with it, if they're I, I mean, I guess the question I would have is, are we, I haven't spoken with, with Connor for a while. He's obviously been busier. He's had bigger fish to fry. Um, would this zoning, you know, would, is there the appetite to handle this at town meeting? You know, do, do we know that or? Uh, I don't know that. Um, I would guess the biggest thing that's going to come at town meeting whenever it comes is going to be a much different budget. <laughs> yes. Yep. Um, so, well, maybe between now and our next meeting, you know, if you, I don't know, if you talk to Connor, maybe you can see, you know, okay. is he going to be open to us doing zoning? And if he is, because then we should probably think, we should probably contact the neighborhood group we were dealing with. So, um, I mean, with that in mind, it might make sense for us to consider also what would be the simplest, most straightforward, um, you know, bylaw that is acceptable to um, the majority of us that could go through a town meeting vote so that there is something, um, a process that people can, developers can use to, um, to start thinking about developing that land. If there is going to be any option of having a bylaw on the agenda in the first place, um, it should be one that could be, a, you know, most passable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, something something that most of us agree on is probably better than um, than something that has to wait until, you know, October. 
Yeah, I, I would like to add that the worst thing that can happen with things like that is not to have a deadline. That's when things drag and don't get done. Uh, we don't have the rush. On the other hand, there is no reason why we cannot finish this. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty much at the finish line anyways. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I guess my two cents is, you know, first of all, I don't really know if we kind of go towards the special permit process. I don't know how that's different in substance than what we've got now. So I, I don't know why we would even go through the process of jumping through all these hoops to get something done on this by June. Um, you know, my the, the second point I would make is having thought about this a little bit more after the last meeting, you know, I don't see why, and maybe, maybe town council would be able to explain it, but I don't see why we wouldn't be able to incorporate design, why we wouldn't be able to put the design standards in the rules and regulations and incorporate a site plan review with specific reference to those design standards in the bylaw and state something to the effect of, you know, the design standards contained in the rules and regulations, which may be amended from time to time. Um, you know, I don't know if that's something that is achievable, but that would certainly accomplish the goals, which I think Amos was just talking about and which I think, you know, most of us had been talking about for the past six or seven months that we've been looking at this issue, actually probably longer than that, that we've been looking at this issue. I guess my overarching point here is not a different one that I've made most of the time we've been discussing this, which is that, you know, if you go to the special permit versus, you know, sort of, um, you know, site plan review, I mean, you're really just talking about the difference between being able to say no to a project altogether because you don't like it versus, you know, requiring some reasonable terms and conditions upon the project, you know, but, but not the ability to say no. And I think that's where we, most of us were at up until, you know, a few weeks ago when we received you know, this, this email from uh, Emi and, and Greg, you know, I mean, it's. Well, I want to take. I want to take. I, I want to take offense. Uh, I want to di disagree with that. We we went like we were taking stroll pots. Uh, we didn't take any, you know, straw poles. Um, you know, so. Well, no, but we went through the process of drafting a document, and and now we're basically talking about throwing that away, scrapping the no, entire no, thing. All, all we're doing is we're simply changing one column and of one row of a spreadsheet from from a Y to a PZB for special permit. And it's our two we can agree to we can agree to disagree on that, okay, Greg. People fine. can read the document. But but the last point that I would make is that we're we're on the planning board. We're not developers. And I think that that is something that needs to be considered here. And I don't understand that point. What's what's that mean? Well we we shouldn't be designing and carrying out uh, plans for developers. I mean, the developers develop property. We are on the planning. Oh, that? I don't understand. The structure that the, the, the reason why the widespread use of special permit has been derided by planners as well as land use lawyers throughout the country is because it gives too much control to planning boards. It's that's not a planning board's job to design and carry out a design for a project. That's a developer's job. We have a role, and I think that the site plan review process is more consistent with what the planning board's role is in the development process. That's, well, that's what I'm saying. I disagree in terms of how that ties into Easton. For 15 years ago, we were given a charge by the Board of Selectmen to improve the aesthetic in Easton. Easton has been blessed with, with so many gifts we were left with architecture and landscape, <clears throat> uh, landscapes and, and open space. And we feared, we didn't want to just look like every other blighted commercial stretch, you know, of, of, with every, you know, typical franchise with just plexiglass signs. And we wanted to stand out that that was what, what attracted so many people to Easton in the first place. And, you know, 
the planning board, we don't design. Um, but we have to look at the reality of what is in Easton. This is a small district. We're not looking at, lot, we don't have 50, 60 acre parcels where someone's gonna come in and put up some, you know, some multi-million dollar project. There's just right, but we've done that. We've done that with, with the bylaws that we put together and spent the past eight months on. I mean, I agree with the, the, the main points that you make. Right? I'll let you speak, Bob. Can, can I finish? That, that's, that's fine. You've dominated the conversation. You can continue to. Well, you know, I think it's important. The two newest members who have the least experience with special permits in Easton, um, you know, I think if you guys go back and look at the projects, what's been approved, everybody, both the, the townspeople, but more importantly, the applicants, the developers, as you call them, have, have been happy. They've been very happy. And things have zoomed through through planning board. You know, you you said many many times that Easton has a terrible reputation. Well, it's not the planning board. Planning board doesn't have a terrible reputation. Who does who does have a terrible reputation? Is uh, building inspectors who? The town the town is known as not being easy to develop, in. and you not can't prove. Board. And you can't. Well, says you. You can't, you can't prove a negative, Greg. Your whole point is, well, I know every developer that's interested in developing land in Easton, and they've all talked to me, and they're all, all fine with this process. And, you know, you can't prove a negative. If you have special permit that is required, it, is, it just takes more time, period. That's, I mean, that's not something that's debatable. And so if you implement that, then, then that's okay. But but you are just you're you're conceding that you're not going to get all of the interest that I think at the outset of this thing we all wanted to see. So if you just want to go with you know business as usual and the way that, that things are done currently, then that's fine. And if you get the support of the rest of the board, then that's fine, Greg. You know, I don't want to get in a tit for tat for you every time this comes up. You know how I feel. And you know, I, I thought most of us felt the same way based on what we were doing to prepare this bylaw with Judy. And, and now things have changed. And so be it. If, if that's how it has to be, then, then that's fine. But I'm entitled to my opinion, and I'm not, I'm not going to vote for it. That's for sure. Um, I, I would just disagree that um, you know, you're using a lot of gener generalities, which I understand because you work in construction law. We approach this from different angles. I'm approaching this from the angle of 15 years of experience in Easton on multiple boards and special permits in Easton have not, through the planning board, I can only speak for the planning board, have not taken longer than site plan review. Because we, we do a lot of work ahead of time. We communicate, what is going on with my computer? We communicate, we, we communicate um, constantly and, and we've, been, we've been very successful. Now when a project leaves us, if it goes to another board, that's out of our control. If, if another board delays it, that I, you know, that that's um, you you can't blame the planning board for that. Well, Greg, I mean, just how many how many for the Korea's Plaza project? How many meetings had to be done in order for that process to get approved by the planning board? Both both you know, public know, meetings, four meetings, five meetings. Yeah, how many how many meetings did? you personally as the chair have to have with the developers? I didn't have to, I was invited probably to 20 meetings. Yeah. But you have to understand since you, you know, that project, you know, that, that, you know, think about that project is recreating or intended to, to help revitalize and recreate a, a new downtown um, with in the, the project, uh, the owner on that, you know, had no development experience. So we did a lot of meetings with them. They they asked us to. It was a hand in hand. It was Con Connor yeah. Reed, the special Steph permit. Steph Stephanie Danielson, um, many members of the town staff, uh, and myself, and members of the board met with Mr. Walsh and his team at their request, and it was a very successful, very um, enjoyable uh, endeavor. Um, so, you know, I, I say I don't look at that as bad. When I I like I think that's great when. Developers in the town can work together, just like we did um, with our, our flexible developments, with like Weber Estates or with with um, Good Speed Estates. Um, I mean, I, 
I think, I don't think it's a bad thing. I'd much rather, you know, the process of people are just going to come in. I, I think it's pie in the sky. If you think a developer, whether he's a small or large or local or, or, or national, is going to come in and um, bet, bet, the town's going to be better served or he just comes in and says, okay, I've done my interpretation of your bylaw. And let's face it, bylaws are, are filled with loopholes and are, are ambiguous at best by their nature. And um, versus working hand in hand, we've had a collaboration. And you know, board but you're going to have a collaboration either way. The only difference is not is well, does, no, the only the only difference between the special permit process and the site plan review process that's been outlined in the bylaw that we all created together is the ability to say no. That's the only difference, Greg. That's the only yeah, but, difference. But, but, but you know, you're, you're just not being realistic. You know, a developer comes in. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, I'm but being accurate. The only the difference is the ability to say no. That's right, what you want. No, no, the only difference is there's, well, there's another difference too. Because you, obviously you think only the town's the bad people. But a developer could come in, you come in, do a meeting or two, and and the you know the board could try to work on some things through your your um, your process, and then he could say, you know what, I don't like what they're asking for. Or, I don't want this. And boom, that's it. And and as long as he ticks off everything li listed in the in the bylaw, which could be a really crappy project, it, it would ha we'd have to approve it. And we get that situation much more than we get um, the planning board saying no. Planning board members, tell remind, tell me the last time we said no to something. You guys have been on this a lot longer than than Bob, so maybe you could help out. What's what's name a project we said no to? Then what's the then what's the point? Then why do you need the ability to have that veto power, Greg? Uh, because we're having you know it's carrot and stick, I guess. You know, it's the difference between right. people coming in saying, "Hey, what do you guys want?" versus "Huh, we don't have to do it." Let's so let's just look for the cheapest way out, and that's not going to get us the best product. And and we look at it, but we we can differ on that. That's fine. You want the easiest process possible for the for the applicant so that they can just so with the least input from you, you you said planning board doesn't plan but yet you want us to have design standards no so, i, don't, <laughs> I think I, design standards are reasonable uh, without question i mean that's all part of planning but i don't still, think that i don't think that the planning board being involved in the development process throughout makes sense or is feasible well, and i don't well, think I, that's I anything that any totally that any planning board design. should want I totally whether disagree. it's Easton, whether it's Boston, whether it's any other town or municipality in Massachusetts. Well, I, I you know what? Uh, I, I totally disagree. So I mean, maybe, I mean, know, I guess, we can just disagree there. That's fine. Um, but, we do. But I've wasted my time for 15 years, folks. If we've, we've, we've been building up, you know, we had the charge. Go back, read the master plan. Have you read the master plan? How are we going to get the things called out in the master plan, which was created by residents of Easton? How are we going to get that? without going through special permit, you know? And call, call Jay Tallerman, Bob. I wish you'd call, you know, you'll speak the same language of both attorneys. You just, he'll, he'll do a much better, much more eloquent job than I am. And, you know? and, and you won't Greg, be talking, Greg, you know, you, Greg you I, would, I would like to ask you a question, Greg. So let's say for a minute that you are a bene, benevolent uh, chair and you will work with development and will not be unreasonable. And I have seen this on you. Uh, I'm from the board, the short time, and, uh, but you can get, and I understand what uh, what Bob is saying is, you can get to a situation and it's not you anymore, and someone will abuse that power to say no. Yeah, but you know, you don't you don't write bylaws anticipating who will or will not be on your boards. Yeah, you you write bylaws anticipating who the applicants are going to be. And I think you need to look at the type of um, projects we had both pre and post. Um, you know, I, I, I just, you know what, it's, I, 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 I'm arguing what's happened. And it's a shame. We've had such a changeover in the board. I wish we had three people who were here for 10 years that could, could, speak, could speak about this. So it doesn't look like it's just Bob and I getting into a, a shouting match. Um, but, um, you know, 
next time I'm gonna, I'll bring some of the town elders <laughs> who have been involved in this through the years. A few of them have volunteered to come in and talk because they've been watching this and they, they really enjoy. Bob, you're the first person that's come along and, and has poo-pooed special permit. Uh, we, we started doing it, like I said, 10 or 15 years ago. It's been very successful. It's worked great. Um, and, and, and I disagree. The board, we never took a straw poll. I, I am, you're right. I'm an involved chair and I, sometimes I don't shut up. So, you know, and, and you were attacking me in a few of those meetings. So I said, you know what, I'm just gonna, all right, let's go to the special permit. Let's go to the special permit. But then once we got to the I'm like, oh, I don't know. And then, you know, when, when, um, both Emi and, and Jay chimed in and, and I said, yeah, yeah, they're hundred percent right. You know, and it's been working so well. And I thought, yeah. So anyways. You know, I'm not I'm sure. I'm not sure why you feel attacked. I mean, you're the one that is typically hurling the attacks, but that's fine. I mean, we're going to, we're going to disagree on this, Greg. You can, I will, I'm happy to talk to Jay. Um, I'd be more than willing. I, I looked at this issue for the past couple of weeks in an effort to try to keep an open mind. Um, but I, I just don't see it any differently. And I, and I also, um, I, I really don't know other than the, you know, kind of the main street area. I don't know the reason for this bylaw if we're just going through special permit. Cause as you pointed out, that's something that you've been doing now for the past 10 to 15 years. So I don't really see the point of this bylaw. The point of the bylaw is, is, is dimension, ch dimension changes the dimensional requirements. And I mean, nothing. In current current zoning, none of this is. A, you're gonna you're you're gonna do most of it by special permit anyway. I mean, you may as well just leave it alone. Now you you don't understand how we've done things. That's fine, and I, I haven't attacked you. I haven't hurled attacks, so you know. Oh. Uh, if you want to take this high in the sky, he speaks your language. I mean, come on, Greg. What was that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. You you have, and you know it, and that's fine. That's that's your style, and that's okay. You've done a good job. I'm, I'm, that's not my style, Bob. Jeez, you, you, like me. I'm glad you're attacking me publicly, though. That's nice. Thank you. I, Craig, I do like you. And I do think that you are, are a good chairman. And I do that's think you have good me. ideas. We just, we, just happen to, we just happen to differ on this particular point. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to do, board members? We're going to table this? I, I, really, I really don't see it, Rob, Rob, uh, Bob. I don't see that what is proposed is deviating so much uh, as you are pointing it out, because you still have a bylaws with some amount of information about what is expected on this area. But by the way, it, it got very complicated and needs to change the map and have three different areas. And, and all that I think is good work and need to stay there. And the process by which we are going to approve a project is, is a mix, really, because now you have designs and you also have bylaws. But instead of going and do site approvals, you do, I, I, I think it's a, it's a good compromise. I, I disagree with you. I, I don't think it's that radical. I really see it as a good compromise. The other thing that I would like to, I don't know how you do that. I, I mean, I'm an engineer, so I like data. When you say that Eastern is considered unfriendly for development, I, I would like to know where it is coming from and what do we have for data to, to corroborate that. And if that is true, we need to address it because that's a problem. And I say, I stated, Julie said that if we don't do it uh, by site plan and we do it with a special permit, that we are going to be less friendly. But first of all, we need to figure out, since special permit has been most of what has been done for development lately, is if we are considered really unfriendly. And I don't know how to do it in mind. Maybe you have some ideas how we can do it. I don't know. A survey of developers and get them a questionnaire and get it back and see what what we get back. I don't know, but I would like to be based on data, data and not on opinions, Bob. Well, I mean, I, I think that the one thing that you can look at, Amos, is, is that area. 
And I don't think that that area looks like what, you know, the people of Easton want it to look like. I mean, I think that's probably the biggest thing from my perspective. Anybody else? Yeah, I mean, I guess suppose, you know, unfortunately it comes down to one or the other. Um, I mean, I think the special permit has been a result of some of those, um, you know, as of right uh, developments that you see when you drive down our main corridors. Um, perhaps there was a you know, desire to obtain a better product. Maybe that could have been accomplished um, through, the, um, through the bylaw. It just was never administered that way over the last you know, 40 years. Um, so, I mean, I, mean I, I respect everyone's opinion here and I don't, I don't particularly feel strongly that I have to say one or the other because, you know, I, I think that um, you know probably the best thing for for the town and the area is that we we put, put together the best bylaw that you know that we can all support. But you know if that's not possible, then it uh, it'll be one or the other, and, and it'll go to town meeting. So um, I mean I do feel that you know we did some work on some of the you know the standards, and you know maybe maybe keeping some would be okay, but. You know, I'm open to ideas and, you know, Emu's new, so we have, it's, we've been working on it for a while, but it's a bit, we have an extension and it's a bit of a newer start with, you know, with some new, new thoughts and also, you know, I mean, a new development, you know, environment where perhaps, you know, there needs more incentive. So there are a lot of ideas to think about here that, you know, maybe weren't even there, um, you know, a couple months ago. Yeah, I think it's important that the dimensional requirements, we try to get that in the next town meeting, because I think like that's what we spent all our time working on and what is a reasonable density. Um, it seems like it's really just the mixed use type of building, whether it's going to be allowed by design criteria or special permit. Otherwise, we're pretty much all set with how those are going to be done. Well, sounds like we're not going to decide tonight. Um, so, what if we go move on to some of those uses, and that uh, we'll we'll keep working on the um, that structure. Sound good? Someone take a vote. Roll the dice. End this misery. You know the the streets in Easton. One one oh six one thirty eight. They look the way they do because they used to be the highways. Then the interstates came. And and then over time, you know, big box and a bunch of other reasons have taken away all the mom and pop stops, sure, stores. So you get, what do you get? You get some gas stations, <clears throat> you get convenience stores, you get some, some uh, value added franchise. Um, you get houses that, you know, someone starts a at-home business and, and it evolves. Um, and Easton, going back, when I first, wor first worked in Easton on, uh, I was designing Indian, no, what was it? Indian Cove, yeah, Indian Cove condominiums up on Route 138. 60, 60 units and they were only allowed to have one bedroom each because Easton at the time was very, this is 35, 40 years ago, it's very anti um, condominium at the time. So they wanted to limit those bedrooms. You know, there's always that big fear of the schools, gonna fill up the schools. And um, and so that's why, you know, people, remember Judy was laughing when you look at our multifamily, we, we've had multifamily in our bylaw for forever, but <laughs> when you read it, you, you basically can do one, one bedroom for every 18 acres you have. It was, you know, it was made, so you we didn't use it. But it was never really pushed because we have such poor soils here. And a lot of small lots, excuse me, that without sewerage, you know, any any type of, of you know modern uh, any modern approach to development just wasn't feasible. Um, but then things start to change, and we realize 
in the last 10 or 15 years. It started under David Colton and Colleen. We started, you know, once we got uh, Shovel Works approved, um, we, started, we got our first pocket sewer treatment plant. And we said, okay, that's going to give us some options. And that's, you know, uh, given some, brought a couple extra restaurants to town. And then, then Doug King did the Quisit Commons, and that brought another pocket treatment plant. And, and then the um, Avalon brought uh, the ability to, to buy, open the door to buy sewer capacity from Mansfield. And so in keeping with that, uh, we didn't really have to write much zoning for downtown because you know, all the small, the small neighborhood kind of already existed. Um, but then Route 138, we created the Queens Commercial District. All, all special permits we went through and, and you know, the, the, we, we, I've already made the, the reason why we did a special permit, but, um, and, um, you know, the, still as you're still talking 12 or 15 properties. So you, that they're all developed, you know, or post development, but there, there's no raw land there. You, you have to wait for people to sell or people to want to invest. Um, you know, and we, and we finally got that with, you know, I mean, Doug's been doing his thing and that's been going large. Um, and then, you know, Ed Walsh came along and purchased that property. Um, and, and yeah, we had a bunch of meetings together, but it, it wasn't because it was difficult. Or the, we weren't holding him over the coals. It was a, it was a collaboration. Um, and frankly, the first drawing he came in with, the first design, um, we would all kind of laugh now. He, he looked at, we, we talked about this recently over a beer. You know, it, it looked like a giant Lord and Taylor had been pulled off a mall. It wasn't, you know, like, no, no, we want it downtown. And, and, and again, we didn't design it for them, but we, we had conversations. We expressed what folks who had participated in wanting to be part of the planning and the revitalization of Easton through many programs over the last decade or two, culminating in the, in the master plan. <clears throat> and it brought that to a really successful um, conclusion. We're just trying to do the same thing at Five Corners. Five Corners looks the way it is, not because Easton's bad at development. And not, you know, I and Amos, I wish I could answer your question. I will offline. Um, the Easton, Easton, going back 10, 15 years ago, had, did have a bad reputation because we have some, we had some of the most strict environmental bylaws in the state of Massachusetts. You know, we were, the, the, the wetlands bylaw in Easton is well beyond um, the states in terms of, of benchmarks. And, um, you know, and, and there are many people who would say, you know, when they were crafting that document, you know, some of the folks, the same thing you guys said to me, well, you know, you're not going to be here forever. Uh, we're not creating anywhere near, which we're creating a, a, a collaboration document. Um, and so, you know, we worked, I shouldn't say we, but the people in town on that, we worked to, to make the entire permitting process more predictable uh, more, more pleasant. Um, and, and, and that has been su successful, uh, sometimes more than less, but, and again, I, I can't speak for what happens when things leave this board. Um, but there has not, I, I challenge anybody to find anybody who has been unhappy working with, um, the Eastern planning board through whether through special permits or through any type of process. I, I, I take pride in how hard we, and it's not just me, all of us work. We've changed the culture um, of the projects we get in Easton. We've improved them. And, and that's why I fight hard for this stuff because it's not going to happen if we don't. And, and that's that. So um, you guys, I'm only one person, you know where I stand with it. If you want to vote it down, that's fine. You know, um, that will be, I will walk away at that point because that just will, that just undoes everything I've done. And that's such a huge step backwards. And I'm not, I'm not playing dramatic. I'm not, and that's fine. I can get my life back. Um, but that's where I stand with it. So let's at our next meeting, we'll take a vote so we can get rid of this. I didn't think this was going to be so contentious, um, but let's put, put this away because we need to go. If we're going to move this quick and this is going to happen in, in June, then we have to have public meetings within a month. And we're gonna have to have neighborhood meetings that we're gonna to have to explain the process to the neighbors. Um, and I mean, uh, do you want to go now? And the neighbors would much rather have a special permit process. So would I rather go half what? Do you want to vote on the special permit now, and then we'll have a final vote on the on the bylaw after we refine it. 
Um, that kind of pointless. I, I have you guys read the bylaw, the new version? No, I don't think we should vote for the bylaw right now. So we should. I, I prefer to wait if that's the case. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we should vote now. I mean, I, right, I, yeah, me either. But yeah. Um, all right. What else? We do we to put, yeah, meant, if you want to put special permit aside, we could have a you know non-binding. Uh, it's the same bylaw. Yeah. It, 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 I mean, oh, it's, it's the same. It's the same document. It's just the difference. Uh, is mixed. The only difference is mixed use is by special permit, and and just taking the design guidelines out just to make it you know so we don't have a twenty-page bylaw. Um, putting them, putting them in the the um, administrative rules and regs. Um. All right, what else do we have, Emi? Let's see. Village well, business. Really, it is, I mean, organizational things aside, the things I really wanted board input on is there's a few points where I think, you know, we, I just at least want to confirm with you folks that these are the uses that you want in the area. Um, you know, start here with a nursing and convalescent home. If you If you follow the notes, these would be allowed both in the, in the depot and the Eastman, uh, depot Eastman and business districts. Um, is that fine with you folks? Is that something you wanna, you wanna see? Yes, from Amos. Yes? From me. Okay. I read, I re I read all the things that you propose. I can probably uh, send you an email with my, or you want to discuss it now, but that specific one, sounded right to me well i mean that's if if we can shortcut to to points where if you folks have taken a look at the appendix a2 and you know generally agree with what it says then yeah we can just kind of cut to this is fine if there are points that we need to discuss though as a board particularly with uses i think we need to have that discussion i i, I read it and i haven't seen anything that jump as something that is unacceptable okay um everyone else how are you how are you guys fine with this table huh sorry peter what as was as, that as far as the uses yeah that's fine they're fine okay okay chris bob all yeah i'm i'm okay okay sorry chris you're still muted i couldn't hear you I'm muted yep that, that looks good to me Okay. The only the only thing I are you still talking are you talking Furnace Village? Yes. All right. So going along, if, just backing up because we're going to get the opposition from the neighborhood group. If you remember the folks in the Furnace Village for the residential, they just wanted to go the residential. So we had talked about pulling out um, the uh, nursing or convalescent home. Yeah, and, it's not there. Um, it is living. Yeah, you know, that was freaking them out. Yeah, that, that's what I know there. And anyway, mixed like, use. Mixed use is out of there in the residential. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Well, that is now. Okay. Okay. In that case, then, if we are good with that, then, yeah, we can start looking at some of the other bylaws. Also, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I, say, I, I guess we, we went through this, but I guess we, so the hospital, number nine, hospital and, el, hospital and elderly facility, Oh yeah, there's the larger um, family home daycare, large and small. So in the original version of this that Judy presented, it was just family home daycare. She didn't break it up into large and small as the bylaw currently is. Um, you know, this this would be again following the notes. Is this is this what you want to see there? Family home. I don't it just in the residential furnace village. I mean, I think that the residents are going to be opposed to the hospital elderly retirement facility, you know, and they, they we pretty much agreed with them to keep it single family and, and you know, and, and multifamily with the special permit and, and duplex. With them. Okay. So what about, where are you seeing that? What about, what about daycare? Uh, this is A2. A2, um, look on page 20. And we're looking at 13 uses. What is uh, oops. in my what, what is large and what is small? How that is defined? Um, you know, I don't know that off the top of my head. What is large and what is small? Which one is which? Where are you seeing page 20? Where are you seeing page numbers? Well, at it, the bottom, it is on screen. Why don't you switch to 
Someone in, he's sharing on screen. I'm, yeah, I don't know. That, I lost it. I'm, that all blew up a while ago. Oh. I don't know. Uh, it, it, click on participants of the, and it will the, it will the, the participant will disappear. The, the, the file. He's sharing the screen. Yeah, you should be able to see it, Greg. You might have to click uh, swap shared screens with video. Top right. It's like a box inside. Oh, yeah, you could do. What, what do you see now, uh, uh, Greg? You see our pictures? Yeah, no, my screen, I, I thought I was being put in detention for talking too much. Yeah, I have pictures of you guys, but everything else took off. I don't, I have no. Yeah, but click, click, no click, in part, sharing, click right? participants off. Yeah, but I don't even have that. All I have is your guys' pictures. Well, it, so, it, you, uh, um, I don't, it's like it's the top. Fine, so don't, don't worry about it. I would just, I, I'm following, I've, I've got it through the, the, the links that you sent, so that's fine. I just okay. lost it with the page numbers, but I just, I, the only issue I see on this 2A is, is in, uh, in my stuff we talked about before, but just the, the, and guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I thought we had agreed with the, uh, the residents of the residential district, um, that it would just be those uses that I'm previously mentioned. Uh, and that's what is there. No. Yeah, that's the way it's written. Unless there's one that you're talking about, Greg, on a certain page that. He oh, I'm looking at one dated four seventeen that you that he might sent. Is there one after that? So, which which particular uses are you? Do you think do you think we added uses that weren't there before? Is in so, so, I'm looking at Appendix A two. Yeah. Dated four seventeen. Under Furnace Village Residential. Um, starting at the top, you know, number one, single family, right? And then it keeps going. So um, Hi, can you scroll up? Yeah. Mixed use, five, mixed use, planning zoning, but they didn't want mixed use. Remember we, we said we wouldn't do, we specifically said we wouldn't do mixed use in that district. I thought if, I, if I'm wrong, I'm not trying to be forceful. I, yeah, we have a no right here. Um, then the same thing for, for assisted living. There's bed, no. Correct. bed and breakfast no, was no. okay. No. No. We, have, we have no. Right, nursing home, no. Oh, flexible oh, home, yeah. no. The one I have says special permit PZB. Oh, okay. One, yeah, it's different then. So you, what's the date on yours, Eli? You, you no, know, mine is 4 1. Here, let me see if I can get the 417 one up. That's weird. Why did it go to that one? I got this from something you. That popped up on the screen that they had all the highlighted. Um, Ima, you might have attached the wrong one. I might have. Oh, you know, I got it from it's an email that you sent on four seventeen. That's where I got it from. Okay, let me pull up that one. I just there's a hot link for Appendix A two. So we're all on the same thing. Uh, I'm sorry. The good thing about Zoom is that now I can put a glass of wine. <laughs> there you go. Greg, yours, yours should be the same one we're looking at. I just pulled it up from the email, too. It's yeah, it's, I've got a no on the mixed use. Okay, no, the one I have. Uh, well, actually, school. no, you know what? Yeah, no, it's got it on the residential. It's, oh, you know what happened? Okay. Let me say, let me look at the one on the screen. This one got the link to the email I sent you, Greg. Yeah. With the link on that, um, hit the link that's on the Furnace Village Zoning Bylaw Workshop Editions. Okay. <sighs> yeah, that's the one we're looking at. That's the one with the 4120 date. Yeah. Okay, and then scroll to the bottom Excuse me. of that or just, just at the 13. link. That, yeah. 
Start okay. Page so, 15. all right. So I'm assuming you'll you'll correct the 420. I mean, the 417 one. I'll correct the 417 one. Yeah, I know what went wrong there. It went, it went wrong with a copying. Okay, no because problem. Because the, the headings oh, yeah. are mislabeled. Yeah. I copied yeah, this is one you and I reviewed before. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, that all looks. So, nursing is now in the residential area. Correct. Yeah. What's essential services again? I forget that. Essential service, are we looking on. Um, Oh, down on six essential services. You know, it's it's under the institutional <laughs> uses. So I'm thinking that's, you know, like police stations or, you know. Oh, gotcha. um, you know Just because you know, we'll get that question. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll defer to you. <sighs> so yeah, on the residential, it's pretty much. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Goes all the way through. Yep. With the exception of, you know, the Dover Amendment things and the agriculture uses. Right. Yep. No, that's good. Totally. Okay. Yeah. And they, right. The accessory use and all that. Yeah. And then there is this pretty much down here at the at the end of Appendix A2, which is the family home daycares, large, small, and adult social daycare, which are, yes, ZBA and ZBA. Uh, and daycare is... Children or also adult play? No, I believe that I believe that's children. Special need people too, or what is what is? Um, it? no, those are referred to, I believe, as group homes. Is is what you're talking about, Nimbus? And it, it, again, you don't know what large and small is. Let me see if I can find that out for you real quick, because it should be in the definitions. Because I say small, yes. And the problem is with large. And when this was changed here, definitions is at the end. MGL chapter 15 D 1A. State. Okay. Ima, is this the only one that you mark in red? Or there were, there were a few others, right? The other ones that were marked in red were ones that when I went through and and populated the whole table according to the notes, that's the ones where it seemed to me that there was an inconsistency in the use. Um, versus, you know, what kind of district versus a residential district um, versus what was said. And so, yeah, those, those are the only ones, the nursing and convalescent home. And then, sorry, scroll away all the way down to here. These, these here for the family home daycares. And if I take a look at this. Okay, um, no. Can we go to um, the industrial uses on page 18? Yeah. Um, so let's see. So um, laundries and dry cleaning, is that, that means that say like the existing dry cleaning business is, is grandfathered, but no more dry, you know, dry cleaners or tailors, you know, can move in? I would guess that does, that makes them is you that know, because that's not a desired use that we've decided on anyone? Anyone have an idea? No, that's interesting because um, remember Andrea in her last couple of days, uh, um, it was, yeah. you know, turned out about that, that item we're going to talk about later up there, Stone. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so there's sewer. No, we could put that in. Uh, yeah, we'll put that in. I mean, we're, we're in a kind of a big recession here. I think if we can uh, get anything going, then why, you know, why get too picky with those? Uh, printing? Is there a problem with printers? I mean, we're not going to have a you know a huge newspaper company. I don't think is going to move down to uh, Boundary Street and you know. Mm -hmm. Print, uh, we'll put these in on a yes, then, right? 
Yeah. Bottling of beverages, like a like a brewery. Is that okay with you guys? Well, I mean, remember we had the, just. I mean, I remember just there was the. I remember this one came up, or a couple of these came up, but we didn't. Yeah. I mean, Judy threw them out there, and she just started to talk about, um, you know, a, a mixed, you know, by, tr you know, traffic uh, trucks trying to get into these small lots. Yeah, well, I mean, but that would be handled well, through. Well, yeah, but sometimes you know, I mean, we say if there's an apartment building, they say, oh, there's only going to be you know 40 trips a day more, and there's already 20,000 cars every every six hours. But then you worry about a you know a, a brewery that's going to have like you know. 20 trucks a day going in and out. Yeah, I, I'm just bringing up that's the conversation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fine, either yeah. way. Um, yeah, I mean. Well. Now, I don't know what I mean. I mean, manufacturing, assembly, and packaging of goods. Do we, are we expecting? Uh, I don't expect that um, there's going to be another foundry. Um, you know, I don't think, I don't think Belch is moving back in. Uh, <laughs> We have an industrial zone. But don't forget, I mean, but but I would say we are trying to create a walkable neighborhood here and we don't have, there's not a lot of real estate here. So, you know. Well, let's see, so dry cleaning, that's, that's obviously you can walk to that. I'm not talking about dry, I'm talking about manufacturing. Okay. All right, a, a printing shop, yeah, but these aren't gonna be big, no, no one's gonna move in, no one's gonna put a huge printing shop in Shaw's Plaza, you know what I mean? I mean, I don't think, but. I think we already said we'd give you those. Oh, okay. Oh, but that was not the back track. I'm chiming uh, in because you said manufacturing. I, oh, I don't right. Know. Okay. We want to have manufacturing in this district. So, like, a little woodworking, woodworking, not allowed. Maybe yeah. No. Okay. I can see wholesale business being not allowed, or you know, which I can see wholesale, warehouse, truck, and freight, um, plant industrial, but. You want to allow trucking and freight? No, no, I can. No, he's agreeing with the no. Right. Um, so manufacturing. Um, I'd, I'd be fine with that, but if that, if you think that's pointless anyways, and just leave it a no, I mean, if it's pointless, might as well make it a yes, but if you think it's, you know, offensive, um, I don't think it's offensive, I mean, but it's going back to what are we trying to attract here? And again, we, this is a very small district. Well, yeah, but I mean, manufacturing is a, is a broad, broad category, yard manufacturer, right? You have a, a pen right here. I'm an artist. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, well, well if, <laughs> No, I, don't, I don't think I meet the uh, definition of manufacturing. Okay. That's that's not manufacturing, Peter. <laughs> no, it's not. No, having having machinery is not. Okay. Yeah, All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> one that. Oh uh, yeah, that would, he would come in a carpentry shop there, right? Or so. Um, yeah, manufacturing, right? Yeah. Well, I'm manufacturing in my basement now. I'm uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, yep. We had a cider mill that was manufacturing and bottling in one, but uh, that's. Um, let's see. I'm okay with yes on manufacturing. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Okay. So we got Chris and Peter. Okay. With yes on manufacturing. How do the same here? That's Bob. I That's am too. Bob. Okay. Yeah. And then bottling of beverages. Yes. Are okay with that? I'm a yes. Yes here. Yeah. One, two, three, and five. One, two, three, and five. Okay. Um, yeah. The rest of the no's uh, makes sense to me. Okay. Is there a reason we wouldn't make four also yes instead of ZBA? Oh, uh, yeah, if these others are going to yes, then it does kind of seem consistent. I mean, uh, a shop is definitely less impactful than than a um, you know a manufacturing. Yeah, just keep in mind this goes this this really falls under what you're trying to attract. Yeah. I, that was Judy's. Uh, you know, it's it's not it's not like we're saying manufacturing is bad or you know, but but right. you know, just remember the conversation. Well, we're trying to attract you know business. Uh, first of all, I mean, you know, just like I mean, it kind of it goes right down to the, the you know the conversation we don't need to have again right now. But you know. We can try something and we can change it if, if it's, you know, if it's, we don't like it. I mean, you might get a product that you don't like. Um, but I, I mean, I think keeping some options open here, um, you know, these are, these are kind of yeah, wide but, ranging but categories. Do, okay, so we just got to remember what we're trying. Are we trying to create a walkable neighborhood with mixed use and residential units? Or because you're not going to get that with manufacturing. You're not going to put, uh, right. you really well, think you're going to put 
units over manufacturing or next to it? Just a thought. Yeah, you know, I don't really know. I mean, I don't know what people will have ideas for here. Um, I don't see this being a big, I mean, do you think people are just going to take over a lot? No, so, right, so you don't want them to take over a lot and, and not have a part, have a business where you can have apartments on the same lot, is that? Well, I'm, I'm saying I, I don't think a mixed use would, I, would you want to live in a building with manufacturing? A lot of people wouldn't. You're saying that every lot has to have mixed use stores. I mean, we're also allowing regular business uses, like allowing the business zone, right? Oh, right, but but again, we're not. But but let's. But realistically, how many properties we're not? Are we talking about how many properties are going to become available? How many properties are going to get redeveloped? Well, then, if that's the case, then what's the? It's kind of a the right. same argument that you know, why not allow it in case someone wants to put a nice business in there? Right. If it's so minimal of a risk, why restrict it? Yeah, I mean, it was it's in planning, we're just, you know, we're trying to, I guess I'm trying to, what are we trying to plan for? If we want to get anything there, then yeah, put anything there. That's fine. I, would say, Prof, I mean, you've kind of set the bar here with plumbing electrical as, as ZBA, you know, a consistent point, except for laundries, maybe and dry cleaning, I would say ZBA is kind of the bar here particularly for number five, and this is probably just this last language as I see it in number five, it's, you know, the, the gases, odors, refuse matter, and effectively confined. Those are the ones that I, I think you want um, better oversight on. Well, those are, those are the five, we did, we spent a lot, when we read the bylaw, we have definitions of all those, um, of all those, we have uh, different scales of noise, and um, uh, you know, uh, other. There is. Yeah. There is so that's just find in the bylaw separately. And there is an issue of character. Of Sorry, an issue of what, Amos? Character of the neighborhood. Yes. And the surrounding, because you have a residential area stuck just there, and you probably want it walkable in both directions. And if this would you want this to look like. And if you say ZBA, you will need to approve it. Okay, so uh, if you say yes, by right, they can put it. They can go buy three properties and put a manufacturing plant. Uh, you, wanna, you want by bylaw to block that? They can go now and buy three or four properties and erect a manufacturing site for right. And if you don't want that, you need to put it on a bylaw, right? Ro Bob, help me out. No, well, actually, you have to allow it. You have to allow it in the bylaw, and we just have enough uses that um, if you don't allow it, you, we wouldn't have to have a no, really. Would we, anyone? And, and, and by the way, there is no difference here in between small manufacturing and big manufacturing. Right. So you, you will need to define someone building, I don't know, special pens on their house is not really manufacturing. I just think you want to, you know, you, it's really, I think we're looking at this wrong. Um, you need the bigger picture. What do you want to create here? What up until this point, what we've been talking about, and it wasn't Greg's idea. It was just everybody else's idea. We wanted a walkable neighborhood where people could go to, to restaurants and to services and things like that. And, and, and that's the whole reason that Judy and um, Emai's predecessor um, recommended not having manufacturing. Don't forget that there's ample manufacturing industrial land just west of this, right after it's all, all the way to the Mansfield line. Um, but, that, you know, so I, I it just, you know, just to say, well, we don't wanna, it's not, not so much about not wanting to, to allow a certain use, it's do you want this right here? You know, it's like playing Sim City. <laughs> do you do you, you remember at Sim City? You'd buy a you'd put in a sewer treatment plant or, or a factory, and it would have a twelve by twelve footprint, and all the residents that were within that twelve by twelve footprint would be angry, and the happiness factor of your city would go down. It's the same thing. Thank you. People don't want to live next door to, to stinky, noisy things. And even if they are not stinky, uh, they don't want to. 
live near a factory, even if it's a small factory. I, I wouldn't buy, will you buy a house near, near a, a place where it's manufacturing, even a small one? The I, same neighborhood had the foundry. I shut down. Uh, the foundry shut down over. I, I'll reserve in, in my space about what I put neighbor. my house next to. But let's, I mean, you know, I'll, fine. You know, manufacturing is fine. That's a, fine with a no. I'm not going to, you know, I don't need to uh, extend that. I can, you know. So, what about uh, the, the bottling? That's a, that's a no. Breweries are a no go. Or breweries are um, okay. I thought we said that. Uh, okay, I wasn't sure. Was okay. So, just, just manufacturing. Yeah, we can keep manufacturing. No, that's fine. Okay. Keep manufacturing. No. I'll come back to this bottling discussion a bit, or have we settled on that? I'm okay with that, with it being a yes. Anyway, I thought we, because we talked about breweries on this a few months ago, I thought we were okay with it. So. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm bringing it back up. I mean, I'm open. I'm not, not saying we, it should be one way or the other. I'm just trying to bring it back up because there were a few that seemed like they were businesses that might be desirable for a walkable neighborhood. Yeah, um, a micro brewer it is. Yeah, right. So those. I want to. Right, so one, two, and three are are yes. One, two, and three are yes. Okay. In depot mm -hmm. and 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 the depot Easterman and in business. Okay. And then we leave that page alone after that. Those three changes. So those okay. nine changes to those three. <laughs> Sounds good. Anyone else has any? Oh, okay, that one does. Okay. I thought you meant manufacturer of explosives when you said one, two, and three. I had pages. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? All right. So. Let me go back to. We really, hey, I just, just, I don't mean to cut you off, but number six. Oh, no. Number, six. Um, number seven. We, we really want to sell gravestones in our district? Is that a good business? <laughs> if well, you keep talking, don't keep talking. There's always demand for. Yeah. Now that it's 809, we'll, we'll, we'll start. <laughs> is we can it, talk about what we want to live next to or not. But, is it, is it, um, is COVID the proof? <laughs> what? I couldn't hear you. COVID proof business. Oh, yeah, I'm not going there. COVID proof business. <laughs> um, again, that's, You know, it's it's curb appeal. Maybe is not is not great. I don't know how impactful it is. Um, you know, as as far as you know, noise and and uh, fumes and those things. To Greg's point, I would say that would not promote a walkable neighborhood. No it probably doesn't. <laughs> yeah, but you know what happens with those small lots is you know there's. There might be a barber shop, and then they might sell some gravestones. Then they might have um, they might have you know women's niceties. They, they change, you know, they change over the years. I mean, we had you know, a clothing shop goes to a yoga shop, it goes to you know a hardware store, goes to this. So you now those things change. But if that's a extremely I mean, no is fine with me, yes is fine with me. This line is so hypothetical. <laughs> I'm fine changing that to now. Could you expand okay. on uh, what you mean by women's niceties, Peter? No, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> sure, exactly what that means. We'll put that in the definition. Nail salon. There you go. That's personal. Isn't that personal service? Yeah, okay. Personal service. <sighs> okay. Oops. Close that up there. Um, you guys review all the dimensional things we have back and forwards. Chris, you, did you did you review this bylaws for 
you are the one that brought a lot of the dimensional issues. Yeah, the, the dimensional numbers didn't change. It was just the format that he has it in. Yes, the dimensional numbers did not change. Okay. They, they are the same. It's just, um, you know, for one, I put major project down here because they basically, it, it was a whole nother dimensional section. In, right, in it was confusing the way that it was. That was yeah. Different and then we had a, a number of additional dimensional standards that didn't come under the normal, the rubric we had in place for dimensional standards. So that got added here in this, this new table here. Yeah, that's good. Great. That's a nice job. Okay, good, good. I'm glad you look. The, okay. the one yeah. comment I'll have on the dimensional stuff. Yes. The minimum we're requiring a two-story building for all elements of Eastman and Depot. Yep. That's, that's economic what Economic development. And we have right. to go vertical. We don't have, there's not a lot of real estate. Right. And we can only go four stories <laughs> corner. Is that still the case somewhere? Three stories and four stories yeah. on selective corners, yeah. Yeah, 23. Only, yep. on, only on corners, right? Can you go to the right of that um, page? Does it have like a maximum height? Maximum height is right here. Okay. 37. Except on a corner. Yeah, there was that, um, yeah, four story okay. buildings you can get on a corner. And what is the height then? Different, right? right there. Down the well, it down. says 45, but I don't think the uh, maximum building height has to be a major development, but I don't know. Like, yeah, so maximum building hard. height, I mean, for if you're going with a major project, this is how it is, is you could go up to a 45 maximum building height and four stories. And if you wanted that four stories, story the preference is it be on a corner uh, on a corner lot hey Emi, one thing i just noticed yeah um on footnote <clears throat> excuse me footnote 23 mm -hmm. uh, the very it references the commercial frontage zone which we got oh, that's right that's gone so right strike that yeah so you just say you're located on a corner lot boom or behind the street frontage right yeah Don't forget to save it in mind. Yes. <laughs> now, just um, if you apologize that I would um, kind of put this into the context of the, um, the previous discussion, but I say that right there, that major project um, stories, that, that would be like sort of like a, that would be sort of a major thing that would fall either depending on special permit or, or just by the bylaw. That would be something that, under special permit, um, could be um, could be limited. But under under straight bylaw, that would just be um, that would be allowed anywhere that it's allowed. Is that that's kind of the general way that that works, right? Um, that type of facet. Generally, of yes. That, I would say limited. generally, yes. You are correct. Right, so that type of facet could be restricted by special permit, whereas it would be allowed by right if with no special permit. Yes. Such as allowing well, depending on the use and, and the proposal, but yeah, yes. In short, mm -hmm. that's the general concept. I mean, unless where it was otherwise a special permit. Yes. Oh, yeah. I see. Right. Yeah. A, a different allowance. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But. Yeah, and, and when used in conjunction with the design guidelines as currently constituted, <clears throat> it, you know, they don't really say much. So you'd basically have no control um, if something came in. Think of like that first building we saw at um, Korea's Plaza, which was 
universally disliked. Um, you'd have no, you'd have no, potentially no way to, um, to, to uh, influence it. Right. Whereas maybe like the, um, you know, just think about things that have happened, you know, whereas maybe the, uh, the medical buildings, you know, Roach Brothers, those were, those were just by the bylaw, right? And those, those came out. As, no, those uh, are special permit. Because yeah, of the, they were special well, permit. Because oh, okay. of the height. Oh, but, oh, the know, height. Okay. And I think, you know, to, again, not to read, but it's important. Any, any large project in town, the folks, it hasn't been an issue going through special permit yeah. because the, the people, you know, most people work their, they, they come in, the first thing you want to do is, you know, if you're going to pull, if you're going to build something in a town you've never worked in before, what do you do? You go, you go and you meet the building inspector and you see what he's all about or, or she, or, you know, what they, um, you do the same thing. If, you, you know, most people come in, you meet with the planning board, you know, or, or the town planner or the conservation commission member um, and get an idea of what they're looking for. So that's why there hasn't been any yeah. friction. Hasn't been yeah, any no, I, yeah, I just wanted to, I was trying to kind of, kind of put into some context of things that we've already seen, um, you know, just, um, just cause it, like, you know, as we know, the implementation phase is where things really, uh, where things really happen. Um, so even though we have to establish the framework now, which, you know. Right, and as you know, cause you've written a lot of zoning with us, there's not one project we've said no to. Okay, well, yeah, okay, that's what, that, I was basically bring that up just for the, just thinking about the four stories and, you know, how that, how that would interact with the previous discussion. I didn't, you don't need to start that over again right now. If that's okay. uh, I, I have a question. If, the, if we separate the design guidelines from, uh, do we, and then we don't need to bring it to, to a town meeting. Uh, we have a little more time to get those sorted out, right? To the detail. Yeah. See, what's nice about putting things like that into the rules and regs is right. We just we do it in public hearings, not town meeting. So if we're in, you know, if we go through, we create a bylaw, whether it's special permit or by right, whatever it is, and we go through a problem, we realize, ooh, you know what? That, that didn't work well, or you know, there's so, something came up, some unintended consequence, or so, something. Oh, you know what? Geez, we can do it better next time. Let's let's do X, Y, Z. We can just go and change the the rules and regs based on you know. It's, it can be a sort of a organic learning document versus having to do the whole process, which takes a year and a half and and can get taken off course. Now, now where are we? Um, where are we delineating which you know regulations can be waived and which can't? I, I, you know, I think we had. I emailed you about that a long time ago, but I kind of lost track of that. If I remember that correctly, Peter, that is uh, the regulific um, That was, well, first of all, that was in the version of the bylaw where there were the regulations, and it said comply with or you. We are losing you. Am I the only one losing him? Yeah. Oh, okay. Did you all lose me? Sorry. Yeah, I yeah think you're you cutting did. out. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, I'm saying. Well, let's see if I can get to and give you better. Can you hear me now? Yes, that's great. Nope. We're in like every fifth word. Try to shut down a few things that you have running. Yeah, I might. Have to. Okay, hold on one second here. Can be your. Uh, you're taking this from home or you're in town? Oh. No, I'm at I'm at home, so it's that might be what's yeah, it's your getting me not bandwidth. It's yeah. of your supplier. Someone streaming your house? <laughs> I hope not. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm the only one. Okay. Okay. So um if you can hear me now, it was yeah. that there were the design standards were all to be complied with. If you wanted to deviate from them, it would take a special permit. That was the language, I believe, that was in there. But if everything, yeah. everything is special permit, so how did the, the design? Special permits is much more flexible. A bylaw is a bylaw. No, right. <laughs> if you have design, typically the, the minimum lot size would require, you know, 
a variance from the ZBA, which would still be the case here, right? So these, yes. these these dimensional standards these these can't really be these can't be waived. No, no, right. it, it yeah. was more it was more the ones that were about like you know, sixty percent transparency at the front of the building or yes. story heights. Yeah, but okay. but there are where but there are like there's a look at footnote twenty two. Planning board may waive minimum frontage requirement. Okay, right. Yeah. So where it's noted, right? Okay. Yeah. So where it's there's, noted, there's then we can waive. Yeah. Okay. Right. So basically, it can't be waived unless it's noted. Either way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you for the uh, refreshing my memory. Yeah, I'm still confused about how the design guidelines are implemented when you go with special permit. The design guidelines, if you went with a special permit, they would be put under regulations. And then any project that comes before it, you would judge against those regulations. Okay. So and you like any regulation you have, you would be able to waive those. Right. The planning board would be it's, able to waive. That's, okay. Right. I mean, in my, it, it's, I'm not wrong to say that if a special permit is is it's it's more flexible, right? Because you you can you can waive more things. That, that's why I mean, unless this is what we've been doing with developers with all the special permits. When things come up, we've think about on, remember on um, uh, Korea's Plaza. Remember the buildings closer to the street uh, than the, than the setbacks but for the reasons that were brought up. Once you know, once they got into the project, um, you can't do that with a bylaw without going through a variance and involving CBA. Yeah, you can set that up more. You can set that up more as a negotiation, um, or so a collaboration. You, yeah, you see, yeah, <laughs> you say you set that up more as yeah. You you're going to talk about what you want on this specific lot. What's good for it on this spe this specific piece of property where it's you know on the corner or right across from New Pond or those things, and you you get to basically you know say the interest of the town here is to see this kind of project here and we think that's you know good for you good for, good development here um you know good for you mr developer and you know when you when you do it as site plan approval you're going to lay out criteria that you're going to get to look at the and it's you're more limited on that and therefore limited i think in what type of how you influence the outcome of a better project. No, I understand all that. The mechanism is what I am asking now. It's, it's just a discussion at the approval meeting or hearing. Yes. Yeah, it would, it would be basically, and you, it would be, I think, you know, incumbent upon that developer to say, this is how I'm meeting your regulations, and this is where I'm asking to deviate from them, and here's why. Okay, so you put the burden on the developer to read your design regulations and come to that meeting. Yes. If yeah, they should be they should be able to talk about that. As as with honestly, I think any permit they should, you know, they should demonstrate how they are conforming with whatever standard bylaw or regulations or otherwise or where they're deviating and why yeah i mean yes. so that's actually that's actually a requirement you know in the app of part of the application you know within yeah. the within the regulations themselves so it says yeah. you need to have a list of waivers requested is yes. basically what that's called well with it, there, there is the other side they can conveniently omit well so we don't know i mean we might not but every project we might not say, oh, you have to give us a lighting plan for that warehouse. Uh, we might say you, you need a lighting plan, we might not. Um, but then, you know, perhaps if you had a more intensive um, yeah, use with that, you know, with more traffic, you might say, we want, you know, we're gonna enforce that, we wanna see the lighting plan, so. Um, I, I, I understand that, uh, Peter, that is a, what I'm asking is slightly different. If they conveniently or really honestly, they didn't pay attention to one of the requirements on the design guidelines, and we don't catch them, uh, then it will go without this being corrected, or it is on the burden of the of us as a board to 
to know all these design and regulations very well so we can catch uh, people applying on things that they forgot to, 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 to comply with. So that, that's where I am. I am in the mechanism. These design guidelines are, are obeyed and follow and that, that's where I'm stuck. I, and maybe, maybe it's not important. Well, I think you're but right. It, it is important. And again, and, and not to beat a dead horse, but that's one of the reasons I'm so pro special permit, because if you read these design guidelines, these aren't super detailed. They don't say these must be, you know, uh, Victorian style buildings with, you know, X, Y, Z windows. It's, it says things, it has percentage of, um, percentages of transparency on the first floor. So certain ceiling heights, which might make sense for certain uses, or might make sense if you want to look like every other, you know, retail strip in America. But, you know, we know we some, people may come into us and say, hey, I know this says I have to have 85% of the frontage of the width of my building, but because of these reasons, um, I would like to, to do less than that. I'd like to do this instead. Um, through site plan review, it's much harder through special permit. You say, Hey, great. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, you, you, you get to have, um, uh, you get to have more of a say in it. See, I, I don't think, and this is where Bob and I differ. I don't think it's bad. Planning boards, we don't design, but I don't think it's bad for us to help um, collaborate in the overall um, spirit of a building or what the building should do. Um, a lot of times we're much more familiar with the area or, you know, um, there's reasons we're on these boards, these residents that volunteer, we, we have, you know, um, firsthand knowledge of how the town works. And, um, and it's our responsibility to get the best product we can for the town. And of course that can mean lots of different things, but in through special permit, it's much more flexible and, and we're able to, um, to, um, to, 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 to be more creative with it versus having strict, how often do we look at bylaws? I was like, oh, you get hammered, you know, you get really stuck in there. So, especially on these small lots that, are, that have been redeveloped, you know, cut up through the years and they're all funky shapes and, and have, you know, restrictions of wetlands and, and other things on them, so. Just, just my, the, the only point I'll make here, and I don't want to revisit a lot of what was said already, but, I, I think that Greg and I are actually closer in what we want to accomplish than it comes off as. And, you know, I just think that you can probably accomplish the same goal by incorporating the rules and regs into the bylaw. And that really the only difference from, from my personal perspective is that if you, if you, at the end of the day, don't really like what they're doing, even though you've had that collaborative effort, that the project still can go through. Whereas I think with the special permit process, you have the ability to say no. And so that's, that's really, I think the, the really goes to the heart of the difference between what Greg and I are saying, because truthfully, I don't think Greg and I, Greg and I are as far off as, as the argument suggests that we are. Right. Yeah. But unfortunately it's a matter of, it's come down to a matter of, um, you know, how the board might be composed down the line and you know how we'll vote for it. So it's even though you guys are really close with it, it's a bit of an impasse that we um, would like to uh, hopefully resolve in the best manner possible, you know, given given who we are. Well, I just want you guys to understand because I'm you know it, it's it's really frustrating for me because we've been so successful with special permits and I get it. Most of this board's new, other than Peter, most of you guys weren't even here what a year ago. Um, so I'm you know I, I get that. Um, and I respect Bob's points. Uh, it's, it's just frustrating because I'm speaking from experience in Easton and Greg Strange isn't going to be doing this forever. But, you know, what Bob just said a second ago, you know, you, whether this is a buy, whether it's through by site plan or, or special permit, people are still going to come in. You're going to talk and say, here's what we want to do. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Okay. Much more. And, and Bob may disagree, but in Easton, <laughs> much more, you know, the, the, the people that, that walk away from the table because they don't want to change things are, are developers, not not boards saying no. We, we don't, you know, I can't think of an example 
Uh, and, and, and long before I was on this board, I sat on the other side of the table. I, I, I that's why they, I was one of the first people who, who'd been on the other side of the table many times in Easton that they asked to get on a board. Um, I had presented to every board in Easton dozens of times over 20 years. Um, and I, I just can't think of times when, uh, you know, planning board, um, that after working on a special permit, you know, there's, there's, there's really no big hurdles. I mean, if, you know, if you come in, if you want to do a hundred thousand square feet, but you can only do 50, well, then it's dead on arrival. Okay. I, you know, but you know, there, there's, I just, you know, pe people want to get things done. Why are we doing this zoning? We want to, um, why we're not, we're not, we're not incentivized to say no. We want to say yes. Now you better believe it. I want to try to get as much as I can for Easton during this process and special permit lets us do that more, um, not to the detriment of the developer. I'm a firm believer that in return for a smooth process, a quick process, which we deliver, that a developer will give you more. It's happened. Peter, you know that. You've, you've seen it on many, many projects here. You guys, guys I know you haven't, you haven't been here long enough. I understand that. But I, I'm not, I just, I, I loathe the, the thought that the, 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 the caveat here is that we're, we're going to be these big bad people and say no. We just don't. And it's not because Greg Strange is the chair of the board or on the board. It, it's it, it, people that, for the most part, that we, right, you guys are all on this board. We all want to um, help create nice developments in Easton. We, all, we obviously all believe in development and land use and land rights. Um, I'm just trying to get the best we can. And I, I think I have the unique experience over many, many years here to, to say special permits the way to go. So that's why I get... That's why, and, and it's it's so frustrating because we've been so successful with it. I can understand if we've been saying no to stuff and we've been jerks and been an obstructionist board, we've been anything but that. And I'm going to bring all the developers in here on our next meeting and let them talk to you guys because then they'll see. And, and not all the developers, but the developers we've worked with. I mean, I, careful, you know? That way I, I don't want to have to play salesman here. But can I, I, can I, offer I hate to see this go down in defeat out of scare tactics, you know? Greg, can I offer a, a different perspective? Sure. Um, it kind of reinforces what you are saying, but uh, as you know, my experience as a mechanical engineer is specialized in automation for, for manufacturing. But I was trying to find a parallel to, to these design guidelines and how they work. And what, what is, what is these design guidelines are parallel to a mechanical engineer for uh, manufacturing is specification for equipment. And production mm -hmm. and I can tell you for sure 100 percent after working on specifications that each one looks like a book I'm talking about hundreds of hundreds of pages uh, I don't remember once that we wrote the specification and we went to manufacturers of, of equipment and that specification that we wrote is what we end up doing we wrote so many revisions and so many. So a dose of humility when I read design instructions on this bylaw. And I, I don't know how far because I don't have experience with it. But for you to hit with these design instructions or guidelines, to hit so good that this will be something that you can trust with your life, that the outcome will be good, uh, is far-fetched. I, I, I agree. Oh, I totally agree. I don't think you can do it. And this is this is from the perspective, the technical perspective, Bob, that that I can ensure you that you cannot write something that you can build according to that or be 100 percent sure that the outcome, more than that, a equipment for manufacturing, not different from what we are talking, that is to design and build a, houses or whatever that is, is you go to mark one, mark two, mark three, and maybe after doing that the fifth or sixth time, you have something that approaches something that is uh, efficient, acceptable, and good. So this is a different perspective. It comes from the technical side. I do not think that we can hit design guidelines so good that you are going to have always a good outcome out of it. If you obey only that. Yeah. And that is my experience. I don't have experience with architectural things or buildings, but I don't think it's that different. I, I don't know. That, 
Greg, I'm, I'm right? No, oh, yeah, I mean, I, and again, I, I don't wanna, you know, I just think if I understood you correctly, you know, if you were to go in, if you look at these design guide, design guidelines, the way they're written, if you went in and did what they, they're, they're actually not very, they're very not, they're not very strong design guidelines. They talk about, yeah, amount, like it talks about, you know, you have to have whatever, 60 or 80% transparency. I mean, I don't, that doesn't matter to me. I, I think what's more important is um, that the building has, you know, uh, ni nice landscaping or that, that it sits nicely on the lot. Like, remember that we, we had a sit down, Emi and I had a sit down the other day with this guy uh, who wants to do a project in town and it came in and the site plan was atrocious. I mean, it made no sense. And, and, and again, not, it's not even, just, if you just looked at it, anybody with a planning background, you'd be like, why did you do it like this? And the whole thing was designed around um, an existing septic system, which, you know, it has to come out anyways. And like, that's, you know, if you're designing a building around a septic system, it's like, hey, hey, hey. Um, and so, I mean, I have a vision, I'd like to see in a few years from now where our design guidelines are, even our bylaw, it wouldn't be cool if our bylaw, we, we think of was sort of graphic, like a graphic user interface, you know, like um, um, town, uh, Mil East Milton Square. Um, and Sharon, Sharon had this giant planned unit development that never, that fell through, but uh, they wrote these great neighborhood design guidelines for it with, with examples. It doesn't say you have to have, you know, trim detail X, Y, Z, you have to have this type of roof, but just says things looking for buildings to be, you know, rich in detail with setbacks, you know, and it shows some just examples of all different types of architecture. And I think that's the best way to do things. I hate this, because then people look at that and they go, okay, so this, this is kind of what you want, you know, and um, not, again, not design wise, but you don't want just a, a plain box with no design on it. You want to, you know, just want a little thought, you know, um, and because I, the, the more thought that goes into a project, the siding of it and the, what, or the aesthetic of it, um, in, I'm a firm believer, increases property value, increases profit for the developer because it increases rent um, and it improves the town. Um, and you know, I want to create. I want to see us create neighborhoods that no other towns have, because that's why Easton stands out from its neighbors. Because we have things that no other town. We have Borderland. We have, you know, we have, we have these thirteen great mansions. I, I, you know, I know people get sick of hearing about the Ameses sometimes. But man, were we lucky with their philanthropy and the stuff they left us. Um, All right. And, you know, May we? Anyways, I just I'd like to make some new history. You know, simple as that. So. Sorry, you keep me talking on this stuff, I go. I don't mean to, I'll be quiet now. But I agree with your point. That you, I mean, I, right, your point was design guidelines and frankly, it's in, in whatever form they are. I mean, it's it's hard to, there's so many thousands of facets to, to a building or to a development to think you're gonna nail them all in 12 pages of guidelines, which in, well, are, and they're kind of ambiguous to, so, you know, to begin with. And that's, your issue, that's the issue I always have when it gets to site plan review because you can take it, you know, glasses half empty, glasses half full. You can take it lots of different ways, you know. Greg, we 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 wrote a specification for, for certain equipment with all the requirements. And we gave that to five or six companies. And we needed to evaluate. And everyone came with a different solution to the same specification. And it was difficult to decide who did the best job interp interpreting what, what you did. You, you don't have this problem here because usually you have one developer coming with one idea. But if you, if you put in perspective what I am saying technically, that you can write, um, give dimensional requirements, forces, everything, and detailing everything, and you give it to five different companies, you will have five different solutions. Oh, okay. sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that is exemplified why that dialogue is important and and once we pick one company to go with we have a second and third and fourth specification in order to get what we wanted and st still there was deviations by the end when you're trying to uh, run the equipment and, and and see the results yeah and and using your analogy 
So I look at that and I, I don't know if this is how you meant it, but I look at it as, you know, if you, if, if, you know, you might not get to have a choice because you're right, you, you can, of those five examples, one might be stellar, fantastic, exactly what you were looking for. One might be really, you know, let, a lot, it might be lame, <laughs> might be less, uh, but it ticks all the buttons, you know? Um, and, but so then it's, oh, hey, well, it's, it's the bylaw, we gotta let it go. And, and it, 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 it seems like it takes, it takes, it doesn't give us a seat at the table. And, 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 and I just think we should have a seat at the table. I think that's our job. Um, well, the, I, the, the I other think the planning board, boards have evolved, and I think the, it's important. The other, the, the other analogy is that you gave us a spec and pipe companies came with different solutions, but one covered all the requirements and was cheaper. Uh, we took that one, most probably will not be the ideal, but it was a compromise. And I think you will hit that compromise with the developers too, right? Oh yeah, I mean it's, it's all a give and take. Yeah, that's collaboration. I, I, I for, truly believe it's a collaboration. They are there for the special permit. You know. So have we put everybody to sleep now? <laughs> <laughs> so where are we going to next? What's on this list? Are we okay. Done? Well, I just want. To the question way back was, what was the difference between large family um, daycare and, uh, or small daycare daycare. home and small? It's uh, no more than 10 for large, no more than six for uh, small. Okay. And the definitions that we found it? Yeah, I found it in, um, actually, it, re it refers to uh, um, Mass General Law. Oh, okay. And then... And in Mass General Law, it's a family child care home is a private residence, which on a regular basis receives for temporary custody and care during part or all of the day, children under seven years of age or children under 16 years of age, if those children have special needs and receives for temporary custody and care a limited number of hours of children of school age under regulations adopted by the board. Total number of children under 16 in a family child care home shall not exceed six. And then it's the same definition for large, excepting this shall not exceed 10. And, and you say, uh, yes. Uh, can you go back to the table, please? Yes, I will here. So it was a ZBA special permit for um, to, to be allowed, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine with me. In the, in the in the mixed use, you have ZBA for large too. Okay. Why not yes there? Well, be, well, there's no residential allowed in the um, in that zone. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. That we have some agreement there. Um, ZBA for those two. For the family home daycare um, in those two districts. Sure. Fine okay. here. Okay, you got that? Okay. All agreed on that. All right. And adult social daycare, fine with a with the ZBA all the way through that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, very good. So we've gone through the uses, we've gone through the table. Um, we are still debating whether we wanna do this by special permit or by, um, by site plan approval with standards and that'll continue till next time. Uh, but I think for that matter, at least of, of the Furnace Village District, we can say we're good there. Um, so then it's moving on to now village business district. If you guys are still good with talking about that. Yeah, yeah, it'll be okay. quick. It'll be quick. Yeah. So village business district, this one was just to change uh, mixed use from a yes to a planning zoning board 
to planning zoning or special permit. And uh, reason for that is consistency with existing with existing usage, particularly includes portions of the Ames Historic District, and they are subject to historic district review. So, as a planning and zoning board, as a planning and zoning board special permit, it's better to incorporate that historic review and keep it in consistency with the historic district neighborhood, with the historic district area. So this is, in, in actuality, this would be adding, allowing business in a historical residence. Is that what that's actually um, aimed at? Um, no, because the mixed use no. was allowed already outright um, by right is what it currently is. Yeah, but, so, but I think we're missing something here um, because we had, what we're doing, we're looking to add um, Are we? mixed use or, 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 or multifamily, but we're, remember, yeah. remember we, had, we had looked at some of the existing densities because uh, there's really only a few properties um, that this applies right. to. And we'd come up, I think we're a bit high, but we, we had, and this, uh, this was right before you were here, Emi, that I don't mm -hmm. have to find our notes. I, don't, I didn't have them for tonight, but we had come up with a uh, a ratio, you know, ex ex dwelling units per twenty five hundred square feet. Yeah, yeah. The mixed use. Okay, yeah. So it does allow it. Uh, yes, it is allowing a multifamily. Yes, but where's the twenty five hundred feet? I just don't. That's why I can't find it. Um, in the note right below, right below the the table. Well, there are two things. We are, we're trying to allow mixed use, but then also allow multifamily, right? Oh, multifamily there it is. is what we had the problem with. We didn't allow multifamily, and they had to go to the regular to the to the bylaw that had the more restrictive standards. So we're trying to uh, so. Yeah, well, it's, it's the multifamily that we're trying to. Yeah, so allow. while allowing multifamily, we're thinking about making this change to mixed use at the same time. Yeah, that what I'm getting out of this. Okay, so so that's that's probably then this exempting language here, right? The multifamily standards at Chapter twenty two right. two thirty five sixty shall not apply to dwellings in a mixed use development. But it's still, at least as this was written, which is all the history I have on this, honestly, yeah. it, it's only applying to a mixed use development, not necessarily a multifamily. Mm -hmm. And if I am to look at. Correct. Right. So this, there, was just, there was a situation where it came up that we, uh, we weren't, didn't, weren't really allowing multifamily um, except by the regular bylaw. So we had to. We had to incorporate uh, something to, to make that provision for the village business district. And we lost. Sorry, I took away the screen momentarily. I didn't mean to do that. I just lost everything. So, right, right. So, one, we're, we're um, let's see, we're allowing multifamily, but um, not applying the standards that are applicable to all other zones in, in general. Um, and we're going to change that to a special permit um, to have a little more control over that, I, I suppose, is the idea there. Yeah. You frozen? Me? Oh, no. Did you? Oh. Here, hold on. I think you, I think it lost. Oh. It lost whom? Here we go. Okay. Okay, so do we need to do something to the to the multifamily um to the multifamily line in this? Yeah, well, I think we're going to have to kick up from the 2,500 because we're going to look and it's it's going to, when, when we compared, the, the stuff that's already developed are on small lots, but the, the lots that are uh, the two or three properties or maybe this would apply to are larger and it would result in, I, I think, a lot more, a, a much higher density than we probably intended. Um, right, we're kind of more thinking about maybe like, you know, four dwelling units per mixed use really right i mean exactly. based on, yeah. yeah you know and or if on a larger lot maybe up to six or so but so but oh, we, yeah, can, right, yeah. we can change the 2500 is easy to change we'll come up with a number but other than that i, I think it works okay right right yeah okay. you have to be a little careful too because you know over that right there i mean the um 
you know, the grammar school, I forget the address, I apologize. You know, that could, that would be many <laughs> units if they decide to turn one floor into apartments, right? Yeah. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, so exactly. we have to be careful. Of, um, well, you know what we can do for the next meeting? Um, I'll, I'll grab that um, chart I had. I, I think other, but I think we, we just need to change. Remember, in fact, we even brought this up to, to Andrea, but she was like, and she agreed, but we talked about it as a group, so she just wanted to keep it there, and we could change it later. And this is really, I think, the first time we've talked about it since. Um, but let me, I'll find that spreadsheet with all the- is it, uh, is it, is So it, mixed use need to be divided in two different ones? Mixed use with multi-family and without it? Don't understand. Oh. Well, mixed well, mixed use is, is, well, is, Mixed use is residential mixed with business. Yeah. Multifamily is, you know, multi, multi, multi. Yeah, so it would, it would have to be. If not, it's. But it is, it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. If it's, since multifamily is defined in a different area, mixed use is, it would have to have both components. Right. Uh, well, except, well, I mean, what about, a, say it's a, but how would they, what if you can get, just, just for example, what if they were a business and then they wanted to have their second floor just a single, you know, a one residence on the top? You'd say, oh, well, that might be allowed by, um, you know, home occupation or something. Yeah, but, that, but to depends. allow them yeah, just that to, might be under yeah. the accessory use. But just to but just to allow them the same exact, you know, rules applied to the business use, or to multifamily, they just happen to want to have a, a bigger home on the second floor. In which case, so in this case guess, yeah. they would have to you're thinking they would have to go through the planning and zone well wouldn't I don't know. if so it we could, is we could just allow it we could just call it a, a residential and multifamily you know residential and multifamily provision for for that zone but that's that might be this maybe that's overthinking it i'm not sure well um let me let's that looks like I didn't understand kind of, you're, are you saying that there's no business on the first floor are you lost oh no if there well there are some situations there's at least one but this let's say there's a there's one where there's a a shop on the first floor and one residence on the second floor say in that case okay um that, nope. that actually doesn't fit into any of these except for home occupation which which might be why that by other that's mixed use well, why wouldn't that be mixed use okay it is mixed use. It's oh, mixed right, use. Right, it, are you saying that it should just have less of a test than having to go for a special permit? Peter? Um, no, no, that's okay. I think I think maybe you're right. Maybe I was wrong on that. That's that's okay. We'll leave that. Okay. My comment alone. I, I thought you were talking about something else. Mi yeah, mi maybe. Mixed use in which you have right, multi right. Mixed use is one thing. Multi family the other. Together, but there are two options. One that the residential is only single family, or the residential is multi family or multi, uh, and do we need to differentiate in between the two? I, I thought that was a discussion. Okay. Um, yeah, so. Can you, can you have a shop on the, the first floor and an apartment building on top, on the corner, four floors? Yeah, that's, that's mixed use, you're right. So that's okay, we can leave that alone. Okay. All right. All right, laundromat quiz today. You want to move on to that? Move on to laundromat quiz today. This this one should be simple, as far as I know. Again, tell me if I'm wrong here. But this was just uh, changing it to add it to both all A, B, and C in, in quiz it, right? Yeah, and, 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 and kind of table now to just interesting backstory, guys. If you remember when Andrea was filling in, remember towards the end, she kept trying to talk to us about laundry, right? And why she didn't? Well, it turns out, um, you know, the um, the strip mall for like on the corner of one twenty three and one thirty eight that has a dry cleaner. Oh, by Stonehill, there's a dry cleaner in it. It's with us. I think it was a Seven Eleven that's closed now. Oh yeah, um, a company came in and they want to put a laundromat in there they signed a lease a long-term lease for that for that dry cleaning space because they they looked at their bylaw and looked at our bylaws and it was allowed well they they whoever looked at it, they, they kind of made a mistake they didn't realize there were three quiset districts and quiset a b and c and that property is in quiset a which uh 
it's kind of ambiguous, but dry, dry cleaning is not allowed. It says a hand or laundry mess. So anyways, I, I stumbled into a meeting one day at town hall and um, these people had already pulled the demo permit, had put quite a bit of money into it um, and then got stuck. Uh, and then the DPW, I ran into the DPW director and they would love to see a laundromat get there because first of all, the town gets fees for the use of the sewer and that the sewer plant over there has, doesn't get much use yet. You know, they're just tied into the district. And, and you know, if you know anything about sewer treatment plants, they like, they need water going through them. They got to flush those veins. Um, so they'd really like to see this go. So they said this to us. So I said, okay. <laughs> I told the interviewer, why didn't you just tell us that at the beginning? So, so that's what this is all about. You know, that is that they want to use that existing dry cleaning space. And, you know, and I thought, you know, put a, a laundry, I mean, Stonehill's right there. So it seemed like a decent idea. Um, and, you know, it's good business, right? Good, good for business. And if it, it gets the town money and it helps the treatment plan. So anyways, that's the whole genesis of this thing. So that's why, that's why they're trying to, trying to rush this if we, if when and if we do have town meeting to get it on there. So, because they're at a standstill over there too at this property. So anyways, that's the story. Fine here. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Good. Okay. Very good. It's always more fun with the story. Yeah. Uh, next, we, we already did A2, right? Do we do? We already did A2, so we don't really have to look at yeah. that again. And we already did, we did Appendix B. Did we do that? No. Or so Appendix B is, is more just to show you the whole thing. Um, Looks good. Just as, <laughs> as it finishes out here, is we now have apartments and motel kind of in its, not really in a table on Appendix B. So this would just basically amend this so you have apartments, motel, and hopefully the Furnace Village major project all in one table so that they're, um, oh, you know, okay. gotcha. Gotcha. noticeable. Yeah, yeah, that they're, that it's, it's organized in a way that you, you know, you can kind of make sense of it. And yeah, that looks good. Looks good. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm here. Uh, so in the end, Appendix B kind of starts looking like this. Yeah. All yeah, the that's what we need right so it without, extra yeah. tables. I liked it better when it was stuck in the middle of all those paragraphs. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it looks good. Good job. Okay. Very um, good. So that meeting minutes. Anybody review them? I might have scrolled through them during the last um, last hour, but well, yeah. And you're the you're the you're the, uh, you're, the you're the spell checker here. No, so, no. <laughs> want to make a motion? At this make a motion time. to approve the minutes from March second. Second. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Strange eye. That's an eye. Second eye. Sure. Um, and April seventh. April 7th. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for Tuesday, April 7th. Second. All those in favor? Strange aye. Stetson aye. Anderson aye. Deshane aye. Both unanimous. Um, all right. Oh, wait. Emai, there was something that came up, right? Oh, yes. Uh, the uh, registry. The registry. So here's the last thing. This is. Um, this is the item that is new. Just we got this memorandum today. So registry has now said in this memo that they will accept electronic signatures, um, which I believe means, you know, you sign something, you scan it over to me or you scan me your signature and and I like <coughs> paste it onto an electronic plan. So um, just earlier when Frank Radlin was asking, how do we get you mylars? may not need to get me mylars. You can just put the board's signature onto a scan or my signature onto a scan and send it over. Um, but it does need a vote, is what they told us. So they have recommended that you should formally vote to recognize and accept the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 110G regarding electronic signatures and that members will henceforth execute documents either with electronic signatures or with wet, eggs, wet ink, ink signatures 
and that both will carry the same legal weight and effect. Um, and this is while under the COVID-19 de emergency declaration. So moved. Second. All those in favor. Strange aye. aye. Anderson aye. Stetson aye. Okay, am I? So will that expire automatically at some point or will we have to yes. vote? Yes, because um, the registry will stop accepting those once the declaration is over. Gotcha. So in, in three years. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so how, how this work, uh, Ima, you, you send the document, we sign it and send it back, or we have electronic uh, signature possibilities with software? I would um, no. We don't have a, we don't have software yet that can do this. We're we're looking into we're discussing it in the town if we if we should get that. Right now it would be a scan basically. Guys, I got a special treat before we go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at I'll I'll put my head right there. <laughs> There's a documentary the other night about them. Yeah. All right, so we're, Ima, we're all, we're good, right? We got everything. We have covered everything, yes, unless there's anything else uh, to put in the chair report or anything else of, of that nature. No, I, you know what, I just, I'll, you know what, we're going through crazy times, so I, I want to thank um, everybody at town, all our first responders, all our doctors and nurses, and everybody else that's out there. It's, it's nice to see all the volunteering and hard work and pulling together we're doing, and I know it's tough on all of us, but uh, I hope, I hope uh, thank you guys for coming out tonight. I hope you and your families are doing well. Stay safe. And hope you're not getting fat like I am. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> hey, hey to All right. Thank you, everybody. Second. 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 Boom. Thank Shall you. We thank you, Ecat. Yeah. Thank you, Easton. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe. We are adjourned. All right. Okay. Thanks. Bye, Take everybody. care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.